Cheyenne and Denver in the watch. And storms are now getting fired up right to east I-25 down by the Springs and Pueblo. So I think it's going to be a, a little further west than they originally thought. So it's going to be a little bit more uh, all-encompassing of the front range than the first thought. But, uh, yeah. Uh, that's what I was kind of like, our weather radio went off on my head. Tornado, watch, and I'm like, really? Uh, this is kind of early up here in Cheyenne. We don't get that till what, uh... Yeah, what is your prime season farther north up there? Are you more in that, uh, June-July time frame? Climate change. One thing you can count on is going to keep you on your toes. So, yeah, I said it looks like, uh, like I said, it's just going to be a little bit further west than they thought, and certainly will again encompass more of the front range. Uh, storms are factoring in that'll be uh, in general vicinity over the next couple of hours. So, uh, yeah, what's heading back in Denver right now is probably headed your way. Downpours the bay, just make sure you got the uh, blade sharpened up. <laughs> it could be growing fast again. So, uh, yeah, so I'll be watching the storms in Denver right now as they move up your way and see what they become as they get a little bit further off the foothills and get going a little bit better than uh, what they're doing right now. They're just getting started, but they're really headed up your way. You're probably definitely going to get some rain at the very least. Hopefully, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy, both for your lawnmower's sake and certainly, hopefully, don't get any hail. No one needs any of that when it comes to their property, that's for sure. That's such good news. Um, they forget hail. So I'm assuming that you probably can see those storms uh, off near Greeley right now. There's a... Uh, a line of storms that has formed stretching across Greeley. I'm guessing that you must at least be able to see the uh, skies down here south, southeast. Yeah, the south, southeast, uh, uh, we're seeing the tops, but uh, it's quite a ways away. If it's real hard. Yeah, the closest I get to you is none, uh, just east of none. But really, it's right around Greeley right now, so. Yeah, I said I'm actually mobile right now myself, but just getting back home and, you know, set up shop. You said you were out and about as well, right? Out running your errands, doing the normal Sunday morning thing? Yeah, it's pretty uh, typical Sunday morning thing. Good afternoon. From the Rocky Mountain Radio Links, W0WYX, repeater. Again, yeah, probably about 17, 18 miles northeast of Pueblo, moving off the northeast at 55 miles an hour. I'm starting to get a little bit better, you know, supercellular characteristics of these cells. So I'm starting to get a little appendage in the southeastern flank, so uh, given the conditions out across the front range today, wouldn't be surprised in the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes to see a tornado warning come up uh, on that cell that is currently uh, to the east of Colorado Springs. So again, no tornado warnings right now, but certainly it looks to be maybe early stages of uh, getting the right things uh, in order to potentially become tornado warned uh, here in the near future. This is K0LWC with the Colorado Severe Weather Watch Net. If you're uh, curious of what the informal status is, you can go to coloradoseverweather.net for more information on uh, the informal status and also what reportable conditions we're looking for during the net. This is K0LWC.
The National Weather Service in Pueblo has issued a tornado warning for southeastern El Paso County and northeastern Pueblo County in southeast Colorado till 1 p.m. local time. At 12.25, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located 11 miles north of Pueblo uh, Depot, or 24 miles northeast of Pueblo, going northeast at 440 miles per hour. Primary hazards include a possible tornado, this is radar indicated, and quarter-size hail. Taking a look at that storm again, there was two supercells that have merged. Uh, the potential tornado was actually very close to the NWS Pueblo radar site. That's probably just a few miles to the west of the radar. Uh, pretty good signature on radar. Uh, continues to tighten and strengthen. Uh, this potential tornado moving off to the northeast is heading off in the general direction. Uh, it's probably going to head up to just east of Simla. It might be heading towards the Lyman area in the next couple of hours. So, uh, again, we'll see how it holds together, what other storms fire and interact with it. Uh, but, again, if you're anywhere from Simla over to Lyman, uh, this is a storm you want to be keeping your eye on over the next 90 minutes to uh, two hours or so. This is K0LWC. Copy on Lyman. Copy, Dirk. Copy that traffic. Glad to hear you guys are out there listening. And yep, definitely keep an eye on your southwest. And uh, certainly with the speed of this one, it won't take too long to get up there. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. Keep there, LWC. Dirk, copy Okay, they're all WC. Not sure if you have a chance to look at your phone yet, Daryl, but uh, at least so far early on, the structure today is a lot better than it was yesterday, at least on these initial cells down there near Pueblo. Hey, Matt, repeat. I was in the uh, uh, garage. Mr. Uh, Chancellor, Mr. Oh, I thought you were still out and about. Um, I was just saying that uh, I don't know if you have a chance to look at your phone or your computer if you're home. But uh, the structure on these cells, at least the initial ones on my Pueblo, are back a lot better than they were yesterday. It's a pretty classic structure on this first storm, um, just compared to what we saw yesterday throughout the day. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it looks like the Chaser Convention is from Lyman South, stretched along the highway there, so they're all just waiting for it to come to them. But, yeah, that's some pretty good structure. We'll see if it how long that can hold with that kind of, kind of the discreet, you know, cell, and if it can kind of stay away from other stuff. So it could be another, not a good situation for Lyman here in a little bit, I said, depending on just how things progress. But, yeah, a lot cleaner than it was yesterday. Everything yesterday was fairly messy. Looking at the radar, definitely cleaner today than it was yesterday. I agree with you. Thunderstorm warning remains in effect till 1245 for southeastern El Paso and northern Pueblo counties. At 1234, a severe thunderstorm was located seven miles south of Truckton, or 32 miles northeast of Pueblo, moving northeast at 55 miles per hour. The storm may be producing a tornado seven miles south of Truckton at this time. Again, these are overlapping tornado and severe thunderstorm warnings for this same cell. Again, there's also a tornado warning effect for this cell. Looks pretty classic on radar. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if there was something uh, either on the ground or imminent. Uh, also an update there, a tornado warning remains in effect for the same cell until 1 p.m. for southeastern El Paso County. At 12.37, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado it was located 9 miles south of Truckton, or 32 miles northeast of Pueblo, moving northeast at 40.40 miles per hour. Primary hazards include a tornado and quarter-size hail. K0LWC for the Colorado Severe Weather Watch Net. Thunderstorm warning remains in effect till 1245 for southeastern El Paso and northern Pueblo counties. At 1234, a severe thunderstorm was located seven miles south of Truckton, or 32 miles northeast of Pueblo, moving northeast at 55 miles per hour. The storm may be producing a tornado seven miles south of Truckton at this time. Again, these are overlapping tornado and severe thunderstorm warnings for this same cell. Again, there's also a tornado warning effect for this cell. Looks pretty classic on radar. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if there was something uh, either on the ground or imminent. 
Uh, also an update there, a tornado warning remains in effect for the same cell until 1 p.m. for southeastern El Paso County. At 1237, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado it was located 9 miles south of Truckton, or 32 miles northeast of Pueblo, moving northeast at 440 miles per hour. Primary hazards include a tornado and quarter-size hail. K0LWC for the Colorado Severe Weather Watch Net. National Weather Service in Denver. The NWS in Denver has issued a tornado warning for South Central Elbert County and Southwestern Lincoln County, both in East Central Colorado, till 1.15 local time. At 12.39, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located 8 miles south of Truckton, or 34 miles northeast of Pueblo, moving northeast at 50.50 miles per hour. This is radar indicated rotation. Locations impacted within this warning include Kutch. Uh, so again, the storm is certainly tracking a lot faster uh, than what we saw yesterday. So it's one thing to keep in mind. Um, these storms are moving pretty fast, so it's not going to take uh, very long to get up and uh, you know into other counties and then move across the front range. So it's moving at a pretty good clip. Taking a look right now at current velocity, it looks like uh, if there's something there, which again, looks like a halfway decent signature here on radar. It's going to be located just about uh, 10 miles due north of the NWS Pueblo radar site, again, just south of Truckton, uh, moving off to the northeast. Uh, Stand by one for more additional information. Just a few minutes ago, uh, five miles south southwest of Kutch, uh, there was a report uh, from storm spotters in the area of a funnel cloud at that time. Again, that was approximately about uh, 10 minutes ago. This is K0LWC for the Colorado Severe Weather Watch Net on the Sky Hub line. Seventy-three from the Rocky Mountain Radio Links W zero W Y X Spot Mountain Repeater. The severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect for northeastern El Paso County, central Colorado, till 1:30 p.m. local time. At 12.43, the severe thunderstorm was located near Truck Center, 33 miles east of Colorado Springs, moving north at 50. It is also a tornado uh, warning. A radar indicated that remains effective also for eastern El Paso County as well. Ping pong balls, I hail and 60, 60 mile per hour wind gusts are possible with this storm. Again, this is a severe thunderstorm warning that overlaps the tornado warning. This one for northeastern El Paso County under a severe thunderstorm warning until 1.30 again. Ping pong ball size hail and 60 mile per hour wind gusts are possible with this storm. Taking a look at the current radar, of course, you have the, uh, the main part of the storm in which the uh, hail core, heavy rainfall, and, and the potential for gusty winds are certainly a possibility. Uh, this storm is tracking off in the general direction of Rama and Simla. Again, the tornadic side of this uh, is probably just going to go slightly east of Simla, between Simla and Lyman. Uh, again, it's kind of tracking a little bit more northerly in the last 10 minutes, uh, more so than northeast. Uh, but again, this storm is generally headed off in the direction of Rama and Simla. So if you're in those areas, you're seeking shelter right now. And again, we'll uh, we'll give some more direction as this storm is a little bit closer to the uh, highway up there, uh, just east of Callahan. But again, moving at a good clip, so it's not going to be long, probably about uh, 20 minutes or so. K0LWC on Skyhab Link. The National Weather Service in Denver has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for southeastern Elbert County and west central Lincoln County until 1.30 p.m. At 12.49, a severe thunderstorm was located near Truckton, for 33 miles east of Colorado Springs, moving northeast at 45, 45 miles per hour. Primary hazard with the storm includes 660 mile per hour wind gusts and half dollar size hail. Again, this is radar indicated. A train to watch does remain in effect until 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Again, this storm definitely also has an overlapping tornado warning and certainly has shown signs of rotation. So, again, there's also a possibility of a tornado with this storm as it tracks off to the northeast. Again, uh, in the path of the storm currently uh, still looks like, uh, I would say, probably in the Simla area. Uh, it's probably going to be really close and probably just east of Simla. Uh, might be a little bit of a better bet uh, in the next 20 to 25 minutes or so as the, uh, the main part of the storm is probably going to pass a little bit to the east of Simla uh, based on current radar. This is K0LWC. 
Colorado border in northern Colorado. There is a lot of thunderstorm stretching from just northeast of Dunn, uh, down through Holt and Eaton, uh, down into Greeley. Uh, this line of storms is currently not warned. However, one fell in the line just east of Pierce, about four miles, does have a uh, one-inch hail mark around it, so hail could be up to one inch in diameter. These storms are generally uh, just under severe limits, but nonetheless, uh, definitely get some rain, lightning, potentially some small hail as well. But again, but everything up from Greeley up to the Wyoming border currently is not worn as it pushes off to the north and northeast. And in due south of Simla. It looks like the outflow has undercut the storm, which is good news for the potential for a tornado if you're hoping one does not actually drop. Um, again, it looks like the outflow has undercut that storm, um, so it's becoming a little bit more outflow dominant. Again, it does not mean that you should let your guard down. Uh, still, this is going to produce a very, very large hail, uh, some gusty winds, and a tornado still could form in the future. Just be given the current characteristics does not mean that it will stay that way, but again, in the immediate, it uh, looks like the tornado threat has waned a bit here for the next 15 to 20. So, still, those folks in Simla, uh, and if you live between Simla and Lyman, uh, definitely should be on the lookout as the storm moves in. But again, in the immediate, it looks like the tornado threat uh, has decreased a little bit as it has become a little bit more outflow dominant. This is a there all WC. strong and sufficient inflow to feed into the storm uh, for potential terrain development. So again, uh, with this storm going outflow dominant, uh, that really does pretty much uh, you know, reduce the terrain risk significantly. So they have uh, basically let that terrain warning be canceled, and uh, we'll see as to what happens in the future. It does not mean that it will remain outflow dominant. So again, if you're still anywhere from Simla to Lyman, still keep your eye on the storm. Uh, current hail marker indicates up to one and a quarter inch diameter hail and the potential for 60, 60 mile per hour winds. Again, right now, this storm is still tracking to move to just probably about five to seven miles due east of Simla here in the next 15 minutes. Uh, K0 LWC on Skyhead. Zero DUJ. K0 DUJ. K0 LWC, go ahead. Have an update. The uh, tornado warning for Albert and Lincoln County has been canceled, and I'm just giving you a heads up. Uh, with some of this wind kicking up, I'm probably going to be out uh, storm spotting in my neighborhood. All right, yeah, thanks for the, uh, the cancellation there. We just aired that about two minutes ago. They had canceled it out. And, uh, yeah, I said, well, uh, if you're out and about and if you see anything reportable, just give a shout. We'll pass it along. Thanks for uh, letting me know. Yeah, no problem. KD0 DUJ, back to monitoring. Update for the uh, severe thunderstorm warnings for Elbert and Lincoln counties. Uh, right now, the storm is currently moving into the Simla area. Update for the uh, severe thunderstorm warnings for Elbert and Lincoln counties. Uh, right now, the storm is currently moving into the Simla area. And the uh, core of that storm that will affect Simla is now located about two miles south of Simla at this time. Strongest part of that storm, though, is probably going to go off just to the east of Simla. Uh, the cell that's going to slide off that's a part of this larger storm system uh, is currently located about seven miles southeast of Simla. And uh, again, that part of the storm is probably going to go about seven miles east of Simla in terms of where it will cross the highway out that direction. Uh, again, these storms continue to track off towards the north and northeast between 40 to 50 miles per hour. Again, they did let that tornado warning from earlier expire. Everything currently on radar is showing that this is an outflow dominant storm. So again, uh, tornado threat is very, very low at the present time with this cell. K0 LWC. W3ORR, K0 LWC. Good, man. 
what that line of start is. How close is that left uh, most western cell going to get to you? I imagine that one's going to be pretty close to where you're at. Yeah, we're getting some uh, wind up here. Uh, my giant rooster, uh, if you will, in the front yard just got blown over, so I'm trying to clean up some of the mess. Uh, I'll be right back. Billy 3 or <laughs> All right, very good, Daryl. I'll be in here. Can you there, OWC? Uh, All right, update uh, again back for the active warning that's currently in effect for another 15 minutes. Uh, this one for Elbert and Lincoln counties. Again, similar should be experiencing some uh, heavy rain right now, maybe some heat size hail. But again, strongest core of that storm is going to slay off just to the east of Simla. It's getting pretty close to uh, crossing over the uh, highway here. Again, this cell should probably cross over the highway east of Simla about eight miles east of town uh, is where that uh, strongest part of that cell is going to cross. And the strongest part of the cell probably is going to have a hail up to one and a quarter to one and a half inch in diameter. So uh, if there's any uh, vehicles out there, that would be uh, one you probably don't want to be in. Again, everything still looks outflow dominant. Uh, no evident threat of anything tornadic, uh, which is good news for the folks in and around Simla, as well as the folks just west of Lyman. Again, everything right now points to uh, nothing tornadic uh, anytime in the near future here. This is K0LWC on the Colorado Severe Weather Watch Net. For more information on this net, you can go to coloradoseverweather.net. That's prompt the warning for Elbert and Lincoln counties. The Hill Corps, the strongest part of the storm, is now crossing over Highway 24 near Matheson. Again, strongest part of that storm with any potential hail now crossing over Highway 24 near Matheson at this time. I continue to move off to the northeast at about 50 miles an hour. This puts the storm uh, going just to the west of Lyman. Uh, looking uh, a little bit west of Lyman, this is probably going to end up crossing very near the intersection of Highway 60, not 60, excuse me, Highway 86 and Interstate 70. Again, Highway 86 and 70, uh, that will probably be pretty close to where this storm tracks uh, in the next 30 minutes. K0 LWC. Uh, K0LWC, let's update it for the Lyman area. Uh, the, the storm worn cell that is currently moving out of the current severe thunderstorm warning polygon continues to move off the northeast uh, at about 50 miles an hour. It is going to be crossing over Interstate 70, uh, very much near, again, I 70 and Highway 86. Again, this will be crossing I 70 near 70 and Highway 86 probably in the next five to eight minutes or so. Uh, so I said if any cars are out in that direction, could see some hail damage. Uh, presently, it looks to be maybe about a mile and a half, two miles to the south of Highway 86 at this time. Uh, but again, this will be passing over I-70 imminently just west of Lyman. Uh, looks like Lyman will see nothing from the cell, should miss it just to the west. And stand by for the new warning information on this cell. K0 LWC. Radio, please. K1 B U N. Repeater. You are monitoring. Yeah, stand by one real quick, Jack. Let me just hear this real fast. The NWS in Denver has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for northeastern Elbert County and north central Lincoln County until 2 p.m. local time. At 1.23, a severe thunderstorm was located 4 miles east of Mathis Center, 11 miles southwest of Lyman, moving northeast at 50 miles an hour. Locations impacted include the west side of Lyman, um, Agate, and Matheson. Again, current location of the storm is a little out of date uh, on the warning statement there. Uh, again, the center of the storm, the hill core, is very near Highway 86 and I-70 right now, just west of Lyman again. The brunt of this storm should miss Lyman to the west. Again, if you are in Lyman proper, uh, within maybe five miles of town, uh, this storm will be missing you, again, unless you're on the west side of town. Uh, strongest part of the storm, again, is going to cross over at 86 and I-70 and continue off to the northeast. So, technically, Lyman is in the polygon for the warning, but uh, likely just maybe see a little bit of rain and some lightning and thunder, and that's about it, at least on this first cell. 
Again, that is an updated and brand new severe thunderstorm warning for the next 31 minutes uh, as the cell comes into the west side of Lyman uh, for northeastern Elbert County and north central Lincoln County under a severe thunderstorm warning until 2 p.m. local time again. Center, the strongest part of that cell is at Highway 86 and 870 at this time. K0 LWC and break with that. And uh, yeah, go ahead, Jack. Yeah, hey, buddy. Uh, just wanted to uh, say good afternoon. Thanks for being here again, looking at that storm on the uh, Viero camera. <laughs> it looks it looks mean enough to do something. And did you get that picture that I sent you from um, uh, Andy Nasty in zero STY at Akron? Uh, did you see that? That one. Sorry, I didn't reply. Yeah, I said that was a nice picture. Um, yeah, there was a bunch of good shots that I was looking for from yesterday. I think they said. Uh, is it five? I can't remember, five or seven? Somewhere in there. I want to say it was seven confirmed tornadoes yesterday across the front range. But yeah, that was a cool picture. Okay, good, good. Yeah, you know, uh, looking at uh, the Viero camera for just Lyman, not Northwest Lyman, but just Lyman. Um, I think I've got that camera looking off to the west at that storm. Uh, so it's pretty dramatic, uh, pretty dramatic uh, shot there with that camera. And you can tell that, uh, yes, indeed, uh, the storm is uh, uh, showing the same thing as the radar. It's really interesting to watch. Anyway, I won't keep you, man. Uh, new antenna up on 449.625 here gives it uh, some better gain, and uh, we'll explore the range as uh, time goes on here. Uh, and I'm so glad that we've got those repeaters on that um, our good friend Bill, kd 0 OXW is running out at Lyman and uh, Hugo and uh, uh, First View. So uh, uh, very glad to have those repeaters on. Uh, Matt, thanks. We'll be monitoring here at KZ0VH and Wheat Ridge on 449625. Yeah, very good, Jack. Good to hear you. Yeah, I heard from uh, him out there in Lyman. He had checked in uh, earlier. So, um, yeah, I said they were uh, listening in and they're watching the storm go through, I'm sure, as it's uh, just getting right across I-70 right now as we speak. So, thankfully, it was not, uh, it's not as mean as it was earlier. Uh, looks to be no tornadic potential, which is good news, because um, it certainly was looking a little bit ominous uh, when it first started up near Pueblo. So, I'm glad that uh, quickly changed. Uh, once I got up near Lyman, because I said yesterday was bad enough and need to have a day two the next day after. But good to hear you, Jack. Yeah, we'll be in here throughout the afternoon uh, providing updates as necessary. KE0VH, K0LWC, with the Colorado Severe Weather Watch Net on Skyhub Link. Our time, the potential for golf ball hail uh, now exists at uh, Highway 86 and I-70. Again, crossing I-70 right now at Highway 86. Current radar projection is showing the potential for golf ball size hail. K0 LWC, this is for the storm west of Lyman. K0 LWC, we are in severe weather season. Listen for myself and Daryl, W3ORR, keep you informed at the Skyhub link repeaters during weather events. See more information at coloradosevereweather.net. 73 and stay safe from the Skyhub link repeater linking system. Good afternoon. From the Rocky Mountain Radio Links, Kilo 1 Delta Uniform November Repeater. Storm has now crossed over Interstate 70, and again, it's now located about 3 miles east of I 70, uh, continuing to move off to the northeast at about 50 miles per hour. So, again, the worst of it has now crossed over I 70 as it continues moving off uh, toward the northeast. Uh, so I said if you uh, needed to get wet to Lyman on the interstate, uh, at least for a little while here, you should be clear. K0 LWC on Skyhub Link. K0 MC Stratton monitoring. Uh, so, again, if you were north of Lyman, your last chance, uh, this storm will be headed in your general direction. Uh, right now, again, just taking a look at radar, uh, hail is probably the biggest threat uh, upwards of golf ball size as possible with this storm. 
Currently, taking a look at velocities, uh, nothing sticks out in terms of product potential at this time. Again, tornado likelihood, at least right now, seems low. Still seems to be fairly outflow dominant. So again, uh, heavy rain, uh, pretty heavy lightning as well, and uh, large hail are the primary threats with this storm. And it tracks off to the northeast at 50 miles an hour towards the last chance here in the next 20 to 25 minutes. K0 LWC. Until 2 p.m. for northeastern Elbert and north central Lincoln County is at 139. A severe thunderstorm was located 7 miles northwest of Lyman, moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. Main hazards with this storm are 60 mile hour wind gusts and quarter size hail. I do think they're probably a touch low on the, uh, the hail list now with this storm. Also, should be noted the, uh, the storm might be rooting a bit more in the surface again, getting some inflow going. Um, there is a appendage off the southeastern flank yet again with this storm. A little bit of weak rotation, uh, not overly strong, but again, uh, could be showing signs of again wrapping up and becoming tornadic as it continues off to the north and east. Uh, so again, nothing imminent, but again, could see a tornado warning come out on this cell again in the next 15 minutes. So uh, something to keep an eye on. Again, the storm is moving off toward last chance in the next 15 as well. Uh, this is again just north of Lyman, Colorado. Again, showing signs of some rotation pick up. K0 LWC. And there is a line of storms uh, that extends just east of Interstate 70, but they run north and south, just east of Deer Trail. And uh, we are seeing some rotation as well in the storm south and east of Deer Trail. Rotation uh, is about nine miles uh, southeast of Deer Trail. Uh, some weak rotation is noted there, so it uh, could be a potential uh, circulation wrapping up there again, just east of I-70, southeast of Deer Trail, about nine miles. K0 LWC on Skyo. K6BB, Colorado Springs, monitor. And the rotation is increasing, in fact, uh, tightening up a little bit. Uh, area of rotation, again, is heading in the general vicinity of last chance. Uh, area of interest right now is currently located uh, approximately 10 miles uh, north of Lyman. 10 miles north of Lyman. Again, rotation is increasing. It is tightening up. Uh, plenty of storm chasers out there. Uh, I'll take a look at current reports here to see if there's been anything reported, uh, given what I'm seeing. As of two minutes ago, they are reporting a rotating wall cloud on this storm. Uh, again, that's from storm chasers in the area. Two minutes ago, rotating wall cloud. Based on radar, not surprised as rotation is tightening. So again, could see another development of a possible tornado here north of Lyman in the next 15 minutes or so. So if you're north of Lyman, between Lyman and the last chance, I uh, definitely want to keep your eye up. I'm sure it'll be a tornado warning coming out imminently. County and southwestern Washington County and northeast Colorado until 2.15 local time. A, at 1.47, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located 12 miles east of Agate or 12 miles north of Lyman, moving northeast at 45. This is a radar indicated uh, area of rotation, but storm chasers and spotters in the area are reporting a rotating wall cloud uh, with this storm. Currently, the area of interest is probably located uh, just about a mile and a half northwest of the intersection of County Road 21 and Highway 71. Again, about a mile and a half northwest of the intersection of County Road 21 and Highway 71 north of Lyman. Again, lots of storm spotters out in this area keeping an eye on this storm. But again, rotation is uh, increasing. So again, if you're uh, near last chance, uh, up in that direction uh, or anywhere north of Lyman, uh, keep an eye on the sky. This is K0LWC. Um, these storms are not warmed. However, uh, rotation is still present on radar approximately seven miles due east of Deer Trail at this time again. It's a very weak rotation now presenting on radar seven miles due east of Deer Trail. This storm is currently not warmed in any fashion. However, uh, radar is uh, it's pretty obvious with this area of rotation. Granted, it's fairly weak at this time. Tornado warning storm. K0 
K0DUJ, K0LWC. Are you referencing the one that came out there north of Lyman there, Chris? I think this was a new one. That's, uh, they said uh, that's, uh, northeastern Elbert and southeastern Arapahoe counties. Yep, one of the same. Well, we just aired that one about two minutes ago or so. So, yep, we got that one out there. Okay, yeah, I'm spotting in my neighborhood. I'm near Stewart and Cornell in Denver. So I'm kind of watching what's going on, and I'm seeing some pretty hard clouds to the, uh, to the east of me. Taking a look at things, there looks to be a few thunder showers popping up uh, in Aurora right now. Uh, look to be just south of Interstate 70. Uh, they're kind of uh, due east right now of the I-25 and 225 interchange. I'd say probably about five miles across the eastern part of Aurora. Another cell has popped up uh, between Castle Pines and Parker, just east of I-25. So, yeah, there's a couple uh, thunder showers trying to get going there on the east side of the metro. That's probably what you're seeing. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna kind of keep an eye on it. See if I, if anything pops, I'll definitely be jumping back on, and I'm gonna be monitoring on uh, two one or nine four. Okay, Chris, well, whatever coming in on, uh, you sound good, so no problems whatsoever. Yeah, because the two one zero is basically the Denver air, air but I'm gonna monitor on uh, nine four as well, so I can set it to the scan. Sounds good, Chris. Thanks for checking in. K zero L W C. All right, let's have your weather watching it. On Sky have Link, uh, Storm North Lyman continues to rotate. Uh, plenty of storm spotters out there keeping an eye on this one. However, the area of interest is likely to be crossing over Highway 71 here shortly. Taking a look at the current projection, uh, I would say that this storm uh, is likely to cross over uh, Highway 71, and I'm talking about the area of rotation, probably somewhere near Highway 71 and County Road 2. Uh, near again, Highway 71 and County Road 2 is where this area of interest will be crossing over. Uh, it's probably going to be about another five minutes or so. Currently located about six miles southwest of the intersection. Again, uh, rotating wall cloud should be crossing over in about five to six minutes uh, near County Road 2 and Highway 71 north of Lyman. Again, this area remains under a tornado warning for another 12 minutes. Based on what I'm seeing here, I fully expect that they will reissue this warning uh, here in the next five or ten minutes or so. Again, that tornado warning remains in effect for northeastern Elbert, southeastern Arapahoe, southwestern Washington, and north central Lincoln counties until 2.15 local time. The storm is moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. A zero L W C. Good afternoon, Ron. Can I HP K zero L W C? I'm sorry for that interruption. I forgot I had you hooked up there. My bad. K nine N H P. Oh, no problems at all, Ron. I said we're just in an informal status here, so uh, normal traffic is just fine. I was just saying hi. I haven't heard you since the winter storm, so uh, wanted to say hello. Looks like you guys are going to be getting all the fun uh, up in the panhandle here that we're having uh, this afternoon. Yeah, QSL, nice to hear you again there. And, uh, uh, we, I think we've already had two uh, informal nets up here as well, too, for some severe weather up in the northeast part of the state. A couple of severe thunderstorms moving in and things, but uh, we have been dodging the bullet as far as uh, those nasty, twisty things. But, uh, yeah, I was just monitoring you there, and uh, I do see they got to watch out for most of the panhandle here this afternoon as well. Yeah, I think this whole line of storm that's setting up right now across eastern Colorado into Wyoming is going to be coming your way. I see they just put out some new warnings there in the southeast corner, east of Cheyenne. They'll be moving up uh, towards Scotts Bluff and up in the very, very far northwestern panhandle. 
and then of course all the stuff that's down in uh, our neck of the woods in Colorado will be moving up further probably into the Panhandle around, you know, Potter and Sydney and uh, probably near Julesburg later on tonight at the evening hour. So, yeah, we're having the fun first, but uh, I don't think Mother Nature is going to leave you out of it. In fact, I think the majority of the thought was say the Panhandle was going to get the worst of it. So, I think we'll just see more and more warnings here in the next couple of hours and uh, you guys will get to have all kinds of fun as well. But yeah, as long as you dodge those swifty things, you'll be in good shape. Yeah, you bet. Uh, yeah, I just was watching kind of around this that, uh, panhandle area around uh, Scott's Bluff, Warrington, Wyoming area there. It looks like uh had a severe thunderstorm warning that got canceled there for northeastern Platte County. So Wyoming is north of England there. Tornado watch is still gone. Looks like we're just going to have pop ups all, all this afternoon this evening here. Yeah, that's much like it was for us uh, yesterday as well. It was just kind of up and down and storms were pulsing back and forth and you get a few cancellations and you get a new warning and that kind of thing. Let me break with you real quick. The uh, tornado warning remains in effect until 2.15 for southwestern Washington and north central Lincoln counties in east central Colorado. At 2.03, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located 8 miles south of Last Chance or 24 miles north of Lyman, moving northeast at 45. This is radar indicated rotation. Again, uh, pretty much all, <laughs> I would say all, most all spotters in Colorado are on this storm. So again, if anything forms, uh, it will quickly be known in the warning statement that it's on the ground because there's probably at least 100 chasers out there watching this one. So, uh, but right now, still radar indicated, still presenting pretty good on radar. And again, getting ready to cross over uh, the highway north of Lyman. Uh, that brings us to Again, right around the probably County Road 2 here in the next few minutes. Um, K0 LWC. Down here. I'm going to go ahead and do five. North of Lyman with the uh, train of warning still valid for another five minutes. Again, fully expect them to reissue this train of warning shortly. Uh, don't see why they wouldn't. Again, a tornado warning remains in effect until 2.15 for southwestern Washington, north central Lincoln counties. Take note of that rotation. It has strengthened up here in the last few scans. It is currently uh, crossing over uh, around County Road 2. County Road 2 and Highway 71 north of Lyman is where that uh, potential developing tornado is located. This is K0LWC with the Colorado Severe Weather Watch Net. If you want more information on this weather net, in terms of reportable conditions and what we're looking for in that regard, if you're in one of these affected areas, again, we always encourage you to call in and report information. We will pass it along to NWS. Uh, you can check out more information about this net at coloradosevereweather.net. Lyman, if you're in the area, again, this uh, potential tornado is most likely a rain wrap, so you would not be able to get a good look on it again. If you are along uh, Highway 71, if you're near Last Chance, again, you will probably not be able to see it. Uh, it's likely going to be wrapped in rain based on uh, current observations on radar here. K0, LWC on Sky Hat. K0, LWC from K9 NHP. Yep, go ahead. Well, I spoke too soon. Looks like uh, we're going to get impacted here within the next uh, half hour or so. It looks like they got a severe thunderstorm warning now uh, just east of Cheyenne there, uh, moving up over toward I-80 and the Pines Bluff uh, right at the border, Nebraska and, and Wyoming there. 60 mile an hour winds and quarter size hail so far. No rotation is noted, looks like. Are you watching that as well? Yes, indeed. I had my eye on that one as well over there. There's a couple of dead cells. He said one around uh, the Grange and then one near Burns. Uh, they're going to be moving over into the Panhandle probably here in the next, uh, oh, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes. But I have a feeling they're really going to straddle that border for a while. I don't think they might actually probably won't move over until they get around uh, just east of Torrington somewhere. But yeah, they might get pretty close to Scott's Bluff, but I have a feeling they're just going to miss it. 
the whole thing, I said, it just depends on how fast the entire line pushes east. But, yeah, those are looking pretty good up there, and those warnings are relatively new. Yeah, very good. Uh, we're just watching the travel impact there on I-80 for any uh, westbound out of the out of the state there. So, thanks much. We'll be monitoring K9 NHP. Stand by for additional uh, warning information from the NWS in Denver for the cell north of Lyman. Stand by. Uh, we fully expected the NWS to reissue a new warning, and they have a train of warning now in effect for Washington County, southwestern corner of Washington County, northeast Colorado, until 2.45 to 2.13. They said the Earth Thunders are capable of producing a tornado. It was located six miles south of Last Chance, or 26 miles north of Lyman, moving northeast at 40. Primary hazards include a tornado and quarter-sized hail. This is radar indicated rotation. Locations of that include Woodland School, Last Chance, and Linden. Again, this is a tornado warning now in effect for southwestern Washington County in northeast Colorado until 245. Again, that area of rotation is just south of Last Chance. Uh, probably about four miles south of town, and again, is crossing over Highway 71 as we speak. Probably going to miss Last Chance uh, if you are southeast or east of Last Chance. Uh, you are going to be in the path of this potential tornado. Again, this is radar indicated rotation. Nothing confirmed on the ground. Again, it is currently crossing over. Highway 71 just south of Last Chance right now, and continuing to push off to the north and east. This is K0LWC on Skyhub. Update for that storm uh, near Last Chance. Area of rotation is uh, near Last Chance, probably about two miles southeast of town. Again, the uh, area of a potential developing tornado is now located about two miles southeast of Last Chance. So that's uh, two miles southeast of Highway uh, 71 and Highway 36. Uh, at last chance. So again, that is going to be in the southeast side of town, moving northeast, and is going to cross over uh, Highway 36, probably about, uh, I would say, maybe three, three and a half miles east of last chance here in the next five minutes. This is K0LWC with the Colorado Severe Weather Watch Net. For more information on this net, check out coloradoseveweather.net. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. I said, what's going on? Oh, well, you know, another day tracking the weather. Watching storms uh, near Lyman out on the eastern plains of Colorado. What's going on with you today? Just got out of the pool. That would have been my guess. Yeah, it got really dark to the south, so I figured I'd better get out. And no more got out in the start ring. Well, that's good. You don't want to turn rod in the water out there. That would be no good. <laughs> County north of Lyman. The area of rotation is now crossing over Highway 36, uh, approximately two and a half to three miles east of Last Chance at this time. K0 LWC. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to send you a picture via the uh, satellite phone here of uh, something from this morning. One of uh, Stephanie's new exciting adventures here. I'll send it to you in a second. got to let it connect. Uh, roger, roger. Man, those storm chasers, they're just lined up west of that cell and south of that cell in like a perfect letter T. Yep, and that is the uh, only game in town, at least right now. So, uh, yeah, everyone's uh, just collected to that thing like a magnet. 
Alright, so my title lights phone is booted up and ready. Should be coming through any moment. Taking a look at the uh, storms that are behind this Lyman cell, uh, I should say now it's near last chance. But there is a cell near Lyman, it's also uh, pretty much falling on the same track as the first cell. It is now just crossing over Interstate 70, uh, very close to 93 and I-70, uh, maybe about two miles up the highway from uh, Highway 93. Again, hail on that one could be upwards of one inch in diameter, so that's uh, right at severe limits right there. Pretty healthy hill core on it, so uh, heavy rain hail. Again, very much following the similar track to the first cell, but again, that cell is just now crossing over Interstate 70 to the west of Lyman near Highway 93 and I-70. Uh, no warning on that cell. Uh, K0, I'll double you see. Crossing over southwestern Washington County and northeast Colorado until 2.45. Rotation still showing up on radar, now northeast of last chance, approximately three miles. Uh, again, this rotation continues to move off to the northeast between 40 to 50 miles per hour. This is heading in the general vicinity, uh, probably going to land somewhere between Brush and Akron uh, here in the next uh, maybe hour or so. So again, if you're between Brush or Akron in northeast Colorado, heads up on this storm coming up from the southwest. Uh, we'll see what it looks like once it gets there, but right now, uh, certainly still has some uh, decent rotation here on radar. This is K0LWC with the Colorado Severe Weather Watch Net on Skyhub Link. Two forty-five 45 for southwestern Washington County. At 2.33, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located over Woodland School, or 28 miles southwest of Akron, moving northeast at 40. This is radar indicated rotation, also a chance of quarter size hail. Woodland School and Last Chance are uh, certainly said areas that will be impacted by this storm. Taking a look at the most current radar, couple area of rotation uh, with this storm. Uh, currently, Probably the strongest rotation, uh, best likelihood of a developing tornado is now located nine miles north northeast of Last Chance. It is uh, just east of the Highway uh, 71 there, uh, but it's about nine miles northeast of Last Chance and it's east of Highway 71. There's a secondary area of rotation that's actually west of 71. That's located about 12 miles north northwest of Last Chance. That one's not quite as impressive, but it is rotation nonetheless. Uh, again, this storm continues to move off to the northeast at 40. Fully expect they will reissue a tornado warning again as this storm continues off towards the northeast, uh, likely to impact somewhere between Brush and Akron. Uh, I would say probably a little closer to Akron given the current trajectory. This is K0LWC. In Colorado, this is K0LWC on the Colorado Severe Weather Watch net. Severe thunderstorm warning for southeast and Morgan County in northwestern Washington County and northeast Colorado until 3.15 mountain daylight time. At 2.44, a severe thunderstorm was located 8 miles southeast of Woodrow, or 21 miles southwest of Akron, moving northeast at 40 miles an hour. Primary hazards include 60 mile an hour wind gusts and quarter size hail. Locations impacted include Akron, Woodrow, and Midway are all in the path of the storm. A reminder, a train to watch remains in effect till 8 p.m. local time for northeastern Colorado. This storm does still have some rotation with it, so the chance of getting another train warning shortly is uh, certainly high. Uh, it's a little bit more disorganized but still uh, definitely some rotation in this storm. So uh, again, if you're anywhere between Brush and Akron, this storm is headed off in your direction. It's going to be packing large hail uh, and a potential for a possible tornado. Again, uh, more storms behind this one as well. So it's not just this one. Look at a few more behind it. Uh, this is K0LWC.
have just one quick announcement to make here. The UWS in Denver has issued a tornado warning for central Washington County and northeast Colorado until 3.15 at 2.55. A severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located 10 miles northwest of Elba or 14 miles southwest of Akron, moving northeast at 40. Primary hazards include a tornado and quarter-size hail. This is radar indicated. Locations impacted by this tornado warning include Akron. Again, if you're in the Akron area, I would be seeking shelter, particularly if you live just to the west of Akron. Uh, again, some definite rotation uh, with this storm, a very nice uh, appendage on the southeastern flank uh, coming into town. Uh, currently, the area of interest with this uh, tornado warning is located as of the latest scan, approximately, we'll give it uh, about 10 miles southwest of Akron. Again, based on current projections, uh, this area of interest, this possible developing tornado, is likely going to go to the west of Akron. Let me find an accurate cross uh, roads for where to likely cross. But again, if you're between Brush and Akron, I would be taking shelter uh, at this time. Uh, this is K0LWC. Stand by for more accurate cross uh, and where it's exactly going to go across the highway here. Developing tornado area of rotation is likely going to cross uh, Highway 34 at County Road U. Again, that area of interest is likely going to cross at uh, County Road U and Highway 34 uh, just west of Akron. I would say that's going to be occurring uh, probably, take a look at current, uh, I would say about eight minutes from now. Again, eight minutes crossing 34 uh, over there at uh, County Road U. K0 LWC. This afternoon, the time is 3 o'clock p.m. And you're on the Rocky Mountain Radio Links W0WYX repeater located 30 miles west of downtown Denver on Squaw Mountain at an elevation of 11,440 feet. You can shelter now. K zero L W C. K zero L L H. L L H. Go ahead. Yeah, they had that uh, that funnel cloud there in Akron on the Akron camera on the Barrow Akron Akron camera. Thanks so much. I'll dial up that camera. I didn't even realize they had one in Akron, but uh, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> I'll go to the Colorado Center of State and bring that one up. Uh, thanks for the information. Thanks for the weather reports. K zero L A twelve all clear. Turn it around. Yeah, I do know the, uh, I'm assuming it's people at Viero. I know when there's weather around, they tend to switch the cameras around. Whether it's even just at the start of the day, if there's going to be storms coming in from a certain direction that day, or even when there's like real time stuff like this, that uh, they'll actually jump on and, and to move the cameras around, which is really, really nice because the quality is exceptional with these cameras they have on this network. Should be, uh, be nice to be able to move them around sometimes. K0LH, we're Yeah, and if you're monitoring and want to see what we're seeing here on these uh, Viera wireless cameras, uh, I actually have them linked. Uh, just go to coloradoseverweather.net and then go to the resources section. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and you will see a uh, the other resources section and you will see where it says the Viera wireless webcam. So again, you can find a link um, at coloradoseverweather.net under the resources page. It'll take you to the Viera wireless site and then you can select the Akron camera and take a look at this uh, rotating wall cloud and funnel that is currently moving into the Akron area. This is k 0 l WC. It actually touched down. Uh, again, a confirmed tornado now located 10 miles southwest of Akron, moving northeast at 40. Again, weather spotters had a confirmed a touchdown with this funnel. That is a confirmed tornado with this tornado warning that remains in effect for central Washington County till 3.15 local time. Again, this is just southwest of Akron. Again, weather spotters are confirming a touchdown 
and a tornado uh, on the ground. G zero LWC. Tornado is going to be passing very near Akron again. Uh, weather spotters did confirm it on the ground as of about five minutes ago. Uh, so if you're in the Akron area, your points just west should be seeking shelter. Tornado will likely pass. Uh, over Highway 34, approximately uh, six miles to the west of Akron in the next five minutes. Uh, this is K0 LWC. K0 LWC, KC0 VFO. Any any uh, idea of which way the camera is pointing? Yeah, the camera is pointing west southwest. All right, copy that. I'll keep watching. Uh, based on radar, this uh, tornado might be a little difficult to see. It could be partially obscured by rain. So again, uh, don't expect that you will see it fully visible if you're uh, in the Akron area. Again, uh, confirmed tornado as of about eight to nine minutes ago. This tornado will cross Highway 34. Uh, approximately six and a half miles west of Akron in the next five minutes. Let me see if I can find you a more accurate uh, cross here, just one moment. The tornado uh, should very closely cross Highway 34 near the intersection of County Road W, or it intersects with 34, or near County Road 43 and 34. That's County Road 43 and 34. Uh, and that vicinity is where the trainer should be crossing in the next five minutes. Again, you may not actually be able to see it, maybe obscured by rain, some pretty heavy rain curtains uh, from what I'm seeing here. So again, it may be obscured in rain. So again, don't expect that you'll see it. K0 LWC. Part of the uh, state in population, we are going to move to a formal status for the net. Again, any and all traffic uh, must come through net control. You must check in with me to pass traffic with the net. Again, only reportable conditions at this time. Again, we are moving to a formal status net. We will not take normal check-ins, but again, uh, with this formal status, only reportable conditions uh, for the next uh, few minutes here, as this Torino is uh, pretty close to the populated area. Uh, this is K0LWC of the Colorado Severe Weather Watch net. Denver or Washington County. The National Weather Service in Denver has issued a new tornado warning for north central Washington County and south central Logan County, both in northeastern Colorado. At 345, excuse me, until 345, excuse me, at 311, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado is located five miles west of Akron, moving north at 40. Primary hazards include tornado and quarter size hail. Locations impacted include Akron and Pruitt Reservoir in Midway. Again, this is a new tornado warning for north central Washington and south central Logan County, the northeast Colorado, until 3.45 local time. Again, this uh, possible tornado should be crossing the highway as we speak. Certainly looks that way from the uh, webcam as well. Again, this area is crossing Highway 34 at the present time, approximately six and a half miles west of Akron. K0 LWC, again, reportable conditions. Uh, if you're in that area, please call Kilo Zero Lima Whiskey Charlie. And radio please, Kilo One Delta Uniform November. Thunderstorm warning for northeastern Albert County, eastern Arapaho County, southwestern Washington County, and north central Lincoln County until 4 p.m. local time. At 3.13, a severe thunderstorm was located 8 miles east of Agate or 14 miles north of Lyman, moving north at 45. Wind gusts to 60 and nickel size hail. The primary threats locations impacted include Lyman, Woodland School, Cottonwood Valley, Last Chance, and Woodrow. These are the line of storms I was mentioning earlier that there is uh, cells behind this first big supercell, and this entire line of storms is now warned, all the way from Lyman, uh, stretching up to almost Akron. So everything behind the initial tornado warned storm uh, is also now warned with a severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, this is K0 LWC.
Uh, I'm going to give just a little bit of a glimpse of where the strongest storms are. Uh, right now, the strongest of that line of storms that just came uh, through the thunderstorm warrant are north of Lyman. Uh, they're going to be probably heading off just uh, to the west of Last Chance here in the next 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, good chance of some hail with these storms. Again, that uh, that line that is strongest is currently about 14 miles north northwest of Lyman, moving north northeast again towards Last Chance, we'll probably slide just west of there. Uh, that's probably the strongest part of that line uh, as of right now. This is K0LWC on Skyhub Link. K6CUB monitor. K0LWC with up here for the Akron area. Uh, current radar shows showing some rotation, actually two different areas, could be a handoff as it's known going on. Uh, primary interest of rotation is now located about six and a half miles north, northwest of Akron uh, at this time. Secondary, kind of a more loosely defined area of rotation is located ten miles due north of Akron. But again, primary area, tightest couplet right now, is located seven and a half to eight miles northwest of Akron, going off northeast at 44.0 miles per hour. Uh, still, that tornado warning in effect for another 25 minutes. We're going to fully expect it to keep going based on what I'm seeing on radar, so I uh, don't suspect we'll see that one cancel. This is K0LWC. Reminder, we are in a formal net status. That means all traffic must go through net control, which is me, Kilo Zero, Lima, Whiskey, Charlie. Only come with reportable conditions uh, if you are in the affected areas. Again, we are in a formal status, as uh, I said here, for the foreseeable next maybe 10 to 20 minutes. This is K0LWC. K0LWC, the E5RH. Do you mind if I make a, uh, an announcement? We just got a warning here in Saskatoon on that. Uh, over. Oh, wait, hopefully it's nothing as bad as, uh, as us, but yeah, go ahead. All right, I'll make it quick. Uh, we have a rainfall warning for Saskatoon, issued at 3.16 p.m. Central Standard Time. Sunday 23rd, May 2021, heavy rainfall in combination with other weather factors such as hail, wind, and lightning will make outdoor activities out safe. Please continue to monitor. Uh, that's about it for now. Uh, thank you, uh, Matt. DE5RH, Saskatoon. Not a problem. Control, WC, not control. Uh, what's happening across northeast Colorado. Again, we still have an ongoing tornado warning for north central Washington County, south central Logan County until 345. Uh, that area of rotation is now north and west of Akron. Uh, latest radar puts that area of interest uh, located about 10 and a half miles north northwest of Akron at this time, moving northeast at 40. There are a lot of storms behind this that are uh, warned with a severe thunderstorm warning uh, from Lyman and stretching further north all the way almost back to uh, Akron area, actually. Lyman's probably getting some showers uh, with some heavy thunderstorm activity approaching uh, the highway north of Lyman uh, because Highway 71 going to impact last chance in kind of the same area that have already been impacted by this earlier supercell. Uh, that severe thunderstorm, that severe thunderstorm warning is still in effect for another 33 minutes, and that's for northeastern Elbert County, eastern Arapaho, southwestern Washington, and north central Lincoln County. The strongest part of that line is from North Lyman to Last Chance, uh, moving northeast at approximately 40-40 miles per hour. Uh, with that, we are going to switch back to an informal status on the net, given that the uh, Tornadic circulation is now north of the Akron area. Again, we're going to switch back to informal status, meaning the repeaters are open to normal amateur use, although uh, you could find me breaking in here and there to pass along traffic. So, again, we are back to informal status on the Colorado Severe Weather Watch net. This is K0LWC. K0LWC from k 9 and Uh, K9 NHP, K0 LWC, you were first, so go ahead. 
Yeah, what are you seeing for the uh, development of these uh, lines that are uh, now in Nebraska there on the both Cheyenne and Banner County, just down there in the uh, southwest Panhandle area, and standing up for here in the South Bluff area. Uh, any possibility those are going to be going to here for a Yeah, I would say there's a few cells scattered, and one around Harrison. Uh, that's at pretty much marginal severe limits. And another one further south uh, near Kimball. That one's marginally severe already right now. So it's kind of back and forth between right at severe criteria and just below. So uh, I would say that that line's probably going to congeal. The chance of having a few more isolated warnings, I certainly say it's possible across the panhandle. But uh, as this line all comes together, uh, it kind of does eliminate some chance of getting a more persistent warnings, but uh, yeah, a few of these storms are already right near severe criteria as is, so it's certainly possible to see a few scattered warnings across the western panhandle still throughout the afternoon. All right, much thanks. We continue to monitor here, just uh, noting some of these with some hail cores in them, uh, just around the... Uh, Banner County, just uh, around Kimball area at this time, all moving north about 35. Thanks again, K9 NHP. Not a problem. And with that, we'll go over to uh, FSX. Uh, go ahead, this is K0LWC. Uh, N1 FSX from K0LWC. Uh, go ahead with your traffic. Thank you. Uh, yes. I want to make sure it's Thank you. Thank you. Yes, clear. Uh, K0 LWC, the situational update. Still have eight minutes on the tornado warning uh, for the storm that is now approaching the Atwood area uh, north of Akron. It is now formed into a line of storms uh, stretching all the way from uh, Atwood all the way back to Lyman. Uh, again, the only cell is the northernmost cell near Atwood that is currently trained to warn for another seven minutes. Uh, further south in the line, there is a severe thunderstorm warning stretching from uh, just south of Akron all the way down to Lyman, hail being the primary threat there. Uh, this is K0LWC. We are in an informal status net. This is pretty much tracking for seven minutes. Uh, further south in the line, there is a severe thunderstorm warning stretching from uh, just south of Akron all the way down to Lyman, hail being the primary threat there. Uh, this is K0LWC. We are in an informal status net. This is pretty much tracking right up Interstate 76, uh, the northern part of this storm. Uh, with the uh, strongest cell, it's probably going to go right across I-76 at Atwood, and it's probably going to slide uh, between Atwood and Sterling in the next 15 minutes. As they issue no, uh, new warnings on that cell, uh, we'll go ahead and air those. Still seeing a line of storms set up and develop north of Lyman. Seeing a, a couple small areas of rotation, uh, one near last chance, uh, again, fairly weak, but it is there. Uh, again, still the strongest storm rotation-wise, as well as the potential for large hail, is that northernmost cell. It's just east of I-76, and that cell is going to cross Interstate 76 between Atwood and Sterling here in the next 10 minutes. If you're in Sterling or in Atwood, I would certainly be seeking shelter now. This is K0LWC with the Colorado Severe Weather Watch Net. Zero LWC, Kilo Echo Zero, Lima Lima Hotel. Go ahead. I check out the Lone Mountain camera. What a picture of that storm. Capture there. Waiting at the wall cloud there. DFO. Yeah, go ahead, Kurt. Yeah, LWC, you might want to go back to the Akron camera. It looks like they got a little bit of damage. I don't know, but that's it. Yeah, copy, okay, I'm seeing a 
I'm seeing that white uh, building that's that could be under construction, but uh, I never know. Yeah, but I think that's just a, a regular building, whether it's under construction or something like that, because nothing else looks touched there. So I don't think anything moved through there. But uh, stand by for another warning statement, uh, including the areas of Atwood and Sterling. Uh, stand by one. The National Weather Service in Denver has issued a tornado warning for South Central Logan County and Northeast Colorado until 4:15. At 3:41, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado it was located seven miles southeast of Atwood, or 10 miles south of Sterling, moving north at 45. Quarter-sized hail and a possible tornado. Other primary hazards with this storm locations impacted include um, Iliff, Sterling, and I would guess Pedroni. Somebody knows for sure. You can correct me on the pronunciation of that. Taking a look at uh, the area of interest with this storm as it rolls into the Sterling area. Uh, currently, the area of interest is for approximately about seven miles uh, southeast of Atwood. I would put this possible tornado about 11 miles due south of Sterling at this time. Uh, current track is probably going to take it. Uh, I would say right along I-76 will probably impact the eastern side of Sterling on the east side of I-76. Uh, it's kind of getting left to right a little bit. Uh, it kind of just depends where it finally actually moses, but it's right along I-76 right now, just east of Atwood. Uh, and again, it's probably going to follow very closely I-76 and impact uh, right around just east of I-76 in the Sterling area uh, is where it's probably going to cross over. Uh, this is K0LWC on Skyhavlink. K0LWC, KC0VFO. You want to Yeah, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the uh, camera 15 miles southwest of Sterling. And yeah, that that does look like a tornado moving off to the right. Tough to see with that camera. I don't know if they've changed the contrast intentionally to get more definition, but uh, yeah, it's really difficult to see. I see the uh, the inflow, and the low clouds that are coming in from the right hand side of the screen. Um, I said, but beyond that, I don't see anything that would be. I said, particularly sticking out to me as a for sure confirmed tornado. I said, maybe if they zoom in a little bit, uh, we'll really get a better look at it. But nothing that I can see um, that sticks out to me right there. But the contrast is very strange. It's very dark underneath. And again, I'm not sure if they're adjusting the contrast mainly to try to get a better look at what's going on. But it's kind of it's kind of wonky and dark. LWC, I think what they're doing is they're trying to get a better look at the wall cloud, which they've got a, be they've got a pretty good view of the wall cloud right now. Compare velocity to reflectivity. You'll see that the couplet on velocity is very much buried in the heavy precipitation, so it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to see. It's going to be one of those scenarios where... And there may be something there, but you won't know it until it goes through and you see the damage path. So uh, it's going to be pretty much impossible to see from what I can tell on radar. And LWC, uh, National Water Service, or uh, Reed Timmer just tweeted, rapidly rotating wall clouds south-southwest of Sterling, and that's pretty much what I'm seeing here. Repeat your last one there, Kurt. You broke up. KC Zero VFO Reed Timmer reported a rapidly rotating wall cloud 15 miles south southwest of Sterling. Go ahead. All right, copy at that time, Kurt. Thanks. I'll relay them as I get them. KC zero VFO. Well, 
WC on Skyhub. K0 LWC, K9 NHP, go ahead. Later, but I just want to pass along this um, tornado warrant storm near Sterling heading off to north northeast. I see no reason why it would, uh, you know, quickly fall apart and given the conditions uh, both in Colorado and in the Panhandle. So, uh, Lodgepole and Sydney and those areas. Just wanted to let you know that storm is coming your way and crossing the state border here in no time. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks for the heads up, then. We're just watching it here now. It looks like uh, looks like a nasty time there. I was just uh, taking a look at that Bone Mountain uh, camera. Uh, pretty impressive, actually. Uh, we'll see if we can get uh, some folks. I uh, haven't seen any spotters pop up out there on the on I-80 yet, but I'm sure they're kind of heading that way. Thanks again, K9 NH. Yep. Happy to pass it along, and yes, it looks like a nasty one for sure. It's, it's, it, that storm has been going since South Central Colorado. I've been tracking it all afternoon, and um, it's been the dominant storm the entire day. So I have a feeling it might uh, might make it into the Panhandle. We're probably going to be letting that one go here in the next morning. Uh, I don't think we have any coverage up that far near the border of Nebraska, at least not yet. I do know we're about to add a repeater in Sterling, but we don't think we've done it yet. So the next morning up, we'll probably leave it go and then focus on what's south of that. But as long as you know, that's what counts. K0 LWC. K0 LWC from K0 VH. Yep, go ahead, Jack. Catch it. Yeah, hey, man, just to let you know, uh, before too much longer, the uh, Scott's Bluff for Peter, which has been off the air for a few months, will be back on the air from a new site with uh, much better coverage up in that area as well. We'll probably reach down to nearly Kimball anyway, and uh, and uh, southeast and east of there, and of course north and northeast and circle. Anyway, long and short of it is, I'll try, try to keep you uh, abreast of that because then uh, that area will become... Uh, uh, pretty well covered by Sky Up Link as well. K0 LWC, K0 VH, 449625. W0 SSB. North and east of Sterling, getting up towards Fleming. We don't have coverage up that way, is that right? Yeah, a firm, Matt. A firm. Not at this time. Not at this time. Hopefully next weekend, though. All right, very good. I just want to make sure I said that we're not going to keep following this one. We can now uh, focus more about what's going on a little farther south where we have coverage right now. So, all right, thanks, Jack. K zero LWC. K0LWC from K9NHP. Just uh, for your information, we do have the uh, Sky Hub uh, bridged over with the Nebraska Hub at this time. So we got uh, some areas covered there. Uh, we don't have a station in uh, North Platte yet uh, popped up, so hopefully they'll show up here soon. K9NHP. All right, Matt, we will keep you up to date on all of that. KE0VH in Arvada on 449-625. K0LWC from k 9 nhp Seventy-six, about a mile off the interstate. Probably going to not be visible if you're up in that neck of the woods. It looks to be rain wrapped, but there is something there. The area of interest right now is currently located approximately about five miles due east of Sterling. Five miles due east of Sterling on the eastern side of I-76 at the present time. Continuing to track off the northeast at about 40 miles per hour. Uh, this is K0LWC on Sky Link. K0LWC from K9NH. 
Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we do have the uh, guy up in uh, Bridgedover with the Nebraska hub at this time. I do not have a North Platte station uh, on uh, All Star yet. I'm trying to make some contact with them so we get the noise out of them. Just for information. K9 any. All right. Did copy that traffic. Thank you very much. And uh, did copy. We are linked with the Nebraska hub. I said, uh, yeah, that that one up north certainly will be the the one to watch. It looks like it just wants to carry through the I-76 for a little while, but like I said, it very well could work its way up towards Sydney or Lodgepole uh, here in the next hour, hour and a half or so. Very good. G0 WC. Central Nebraska is also listening to this KC0 EQA. Okay, Central Nebraska KC0 EQA. K0 WC. We don't have any traffic from that. No traffic from Central Nebraska. Just letting you know that we are online along with the uh, all the Nebraska have. So Central Nebraska is listening. Figured you'd be in there. I'm pretty sure you were always linked in. So good to hear you, Doug. And uh, hopefully you guys don't get this. Maybe I'll get some rain out of it. I don't know if you guys need rain there in Nebraska, but maybe that'll be a good thing for you. At least I know Colorado always needs rain. Not sure about Nebraska. <laughs> good to hear you, Doug. Hey, there, all of you see. for Central Logan County. At 4.03, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado is located at 4 miles south of Iliff, or 7 miles northeast of Sterling, moving north at 45. Primary hazards include tornado and ping-pong ball-sized hail. Taking a look at the current radar, uh, the area of interest to potential tornado is tracking pretty much right up I-76 right now. That's probably just to the east still of I-76. Uh, area of interest right now, if you have a better calculation, uh, looks to be approximately nine miles northeast of Sterling on I-76 right now. Again, this storm is going to track north-northeast. This area of interest is going to cross over I-76 at any moment, uh, slowly but surely. So areas between uh, Crook and Sterling, uh, just west of Fleming on I-76, uh, again, probably torrential rain, large hail, as well as a possible tornado crossing near I-76 right now, again, between Sterling and Crook. Uh, this is K0LWC on Skyhub Link. Another note also, before I let it drop, the earlier line of severe thunderstorms that were warned, uh, that warning has been allowed to expire from NWS Denver. So the line of storms that extend from uh, Genoa up north, uh, stretching up to near Akron. Uh, those are all producing some heavy rain, some small pea-sized hail, but that's about it right now. The only cell in that line is this one up near Sterling that is currently tornado warned. Otherwise, every other thing in the line is not currently warned. This is K0WC. Okay, Central Nebraska, KC0, LWC, go ahead. I don't know if you see it or not, but uh, the uh, area around the Scotts Bluff area looks like everything's uh, moving towards, towards the, uh, like the north and south of Highway 385 now from Nebraska up to Rapid City from the Shadron area. And the National Weather Service in Rapid City has issued a uh, tornado warning for uh, that area at this time. It's uh, just north of Hot Springs and uh, east of Custer. This radar indicated only at this time. It has not come through here on uh, my screen yet, but I'm sure it will try. But thanks for the information up there. Is that, uh, get a better read on it here. 
that is up east from that is near uh, the beard. Is it that cell that just got that warning? Oh, I take that back. Now I see it. I see it up there south of Rapid City. Right. It, I've just been watching this whole line there. Like I said, just uh, kind of almost parallel on Highway 385 there from Nebraska up north there. It seems like it's uh, merged together there and starting to kind of fly a little bit. Uh, maybe Shadron here within the next uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Keep an eye on that. K9 NHP. Yeah, thanks so much for the information. Yeah, evening hours, low level jet picking up, so tornado chances are picking up as well. An important update here NWS in Denver has issued a tornado warning for central Logan County in northeast Colorado until 4.30. At 4.09, a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado is located six miles northeast of Sterling, moving northeast at 40. This is a particularly dangerous situation to cover now, particularly also up here on I-76. Again, this is a damaging tornado confirmed by weather spotters. Uh, locations impacted include Crook and Proctor. Again, this tornado is probably located just northeast of Sterling along I-76 at the present time, continuing to push off to the north and northeast. Um, it's probably, again, tracking right on I-76 right now. Uh, we'll get a better read here on mileage in a second for you. I would say it's probably right now. I'm doing about eight miles northeast of Sterling on I-76. Again, storm spotters do confirm a large and extremely dangerous tornado along I-76, uh, just northeast of Sterling. This is zero L O W C. Okay, no warning. Confirmed tornado just northeast of Sterling. If you're in the Islip area right now, uh, you should be seeking shelter. Uh, right along I-76 near Islip, uh, storm spotters did confirm a large tornado on the ground. Uh, so again, if you're in this area, this is in far northeast Colorado, you should be seeking shelter at this time. Uh, tornado's likely moving directly between Islip and I-76 right now uh, at the present time. So this is K0LWC with the Colorado Severe Weather Watch Net. Go ahead. Yeah, just a tidbit regarding that uh, that storm around uh, Sterling. Uh, it can be seen pretty readily on the uh, on the CDOT camera. Uh, it's going to be south. Uh, south southeast of uh, Sterling. It's, uh, it's showing up real well on camera right now. The uh, base of the storm is visible from the CDOT camera out there. Thank you for that information. Appreciate it. W0SCA. Website for them cameras K0 LLH. W0SCA, yeah, this is going to be uh, cotrip.org slash map.html. Um, just go to the, uh, if you just Google C dot, uh, C dot cameras, you'll find it. And the camera that I'm looking at here is uh, south, southeast of Sterling. There's a couple cameras in Sterling itself, however, they're not uh, showing the horizon. W0SCA. Appreciate it, K0 and That tornado now has crossed over I-76 again. Tornado is now just to the east of Islip. It is on the western side of I-76, again tracking north northeast. This storm will be uh, moving into the Panhandle of Nebraska here in the next half an hour or so. Uh, the way this tornado is tracking, it is tracking. Uh, off in the general vicinity of Sydney, Nebraska, uh, this area of rotation and confirmed tornado is likely going to go somewhere between Sydney and Lodgepole here in the next 60 minutes. So um, as it crosses in Nebraska, between Sydney and Lodgepole is probably where uh, folks can keep their eyes in the sky to the south and west. This is Gazer, well, the we see on Skyhub Link. 
with extra central Logan County and northeast Colorado till 4.30. At 4.09, it confirmed a large and extremely dangerous tornado is located at six miles northeast of Sterling. Be northeast at 40. Again, this is a damaging tornado on the ground. The current location of this potential tornado is just to the east of Islet for approximately four miles. It is off to the northeast at around 40 miles per hour. Again, this is a large and extremely dangerous tornado, and this is a PDS tornado warning. Again, this has now crossed over. It is now west of I-76, which is good. Uh, I'm still waiting to see if there's any uh, reports of large hail or uh, any particular uh, reports out of the Islip or Proctor area. Uh, again, just out from NWS Boulder, they are saying, uh, and, and don't take it lightly, this is a particularly dangerous situation. Take cover if you are in this tornado warning on the lowest level of your floor, um, in your home or business. Again, NWS and Denver Boulder saying this is a particularly dangerous situation with a large damaging tornado just to the east of Islip, Colorado at this time. Again, tracking off, uh, it's going to go just west of Crook, between Pete and Crook in the next 10 minutes. K0LWC. For those following along on radar, if you take a look at the radar, you'll see it looks like there's a, uh, a very big donut-like feature to the storm on reflectivity. Again, further sign of just how large this tornado is, um, that, uh, that kind of lower level of reflectivity with that donut structure, um, certainly, I said, looks to be very ominous. Also, want to watch correlation coefficient. We are showing uh, that there is some debris floating around in the area uh, between Islet and Crook. So, uh, I said, this definitely is still on the ground from what I can see with correlation coefficient as well as velocity. Again, this is a PDS situation for those folks in the area in far northeast Colorado between Islet and Crook. Uh, this tornado is going to be encroaching on the Nebraska state line uh, here in the next 10 minutes. K0 LWC. U.S. and Cheyenne has preemptively put out uh, well in advance a severe thunderstorm warning for southeastern Cheyenne County in the panhandle of Nebraska until 5 p.m. At 420, a severe thunderstorm was located near Proctor, or 15 miles northeast of Sterling, moving north at 45. 77 zero mile per hour wind gusts and ping pong ball side hail are possible. Locations impacted include Sydney Lodgepole, Pole, Colton, and Sydney Airport. This does include Interstate 80, between mile markers 58 and 76. This is K zero LWC. Updates for the area near Crook and Islip. The tornado is now west of Highway 138. 138 is the highway that connects a lot of these small towns just off I-76. Tornado now showing west of 138. Uh, area of rotation and a tornado. Again, you will not be able to see this. This will be a rain wrapped tornado. Uh, so you will not be able to see it coming. The tornado is now located about six miles due west of Crook at this time. Again, that is now west of 138. It is now five to six miles due west of Crook. Um, all indications on the radar show that this uh, rain wrap tornado is still on the ground and doing damage. This is K0LWC. I'm Sky Blink. We've got the leading edge of the storm. They're watching it. Thank you. Looks like the uh, tornado is now located approximately 10 miles off the Nebraska border. K0 WC. Stand by for additional warning information. NWS in Denver has issued a tornado warning for northeastern Logan County and northeast Colorado until 5 p.m. At 427, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado is located near Proctor, or 19 miles south of Sydney, moving northeast at 45. Primary hazards include a tornado and Gulf Falls size hail with the storm. Locations impacted include Proctor and Twin Buttes. Again, taking a look at current radar, still some strong rotation, uh, currently located about uh, seven miles west, northwest of Crook, Colorado. Again, moving off to northeast across parts of rural northeast Colorado, getting close to the uh, Nebraska Panhandle line. 
Mike, it was not anticipated. Uh, here comes the uh, tornado warning just now from uh, National Weather Service in Cheyenne for, uh, looks like, uh, eastern Cheyenne County for our panhandle of Nebraska there. Do you have that? Yep, I have that. Uh, take a look at it here now. The uh, standby one. NWS in Cheyenne has issued a train of warning for eastern Cheyenne County in the Panhandle until 5.15. At 4.30, a large and extremely dangerous tornado is located near Crook, Colorado, or 17 miles south of Sydney, Nebraska, moving northeast at 50. This is a particularly dangerous situation. Take cover now. This is a confirmed damaging tornado. We're about to cross over into the Panhandle of Nebraska from Colorado, just north of Crook. Uh, Lodgepole does look to be in the path of this tornado. Again, uh, Lodgepole, Nebraska. Uh, those folks in that area should be taking shelter now. K zero W C. Okay, Lodge Pole, just the uh, confirmed tornado is now just about two miles away from crossing over into Nebraska Panhandle and far eastern Cheyenne County. And Lodge Pole, Nebraska, is in the path of this tornado. Those folks in Lodge Pole, particularly the west side of town. Uh, I said should be uh, watching to the southwest and taking shelter at the time. K zero W C. K zero L W C. K D zero U F O. U F O. Go ahead. Quick, is there a hook echo that's visible on this one, and if it, there is, where is it at? I'm trying to see it. And you're watching that one in far northeast Colorado, right? Confirm the one about to move into uh, Nebraska, headed for Lodge Pole. Are you on Cheyenne or Denver for your radar site? I'm on Denver. I can move to Cheyenne. Hey, go ahead and move to Cheyenne because that's what I'm on. So, uh, on reflectivity, it's not as noticeable. It's not a, uh, a normal hook echo in the sense that you think about it, but when you take a look at velocity, you'll see that right at the border right now is pretty much where the tornado is located. And on velocity, tilt one. Uh, again, just to the southwest of Lodge Bowl, you'll see that bright green next to the brighter reds. So again, relative to the radar in Cheyenne, you have wind coming towards the Cheyenne radar site due west, and then you have winds going away from one another, and they're butted up right next to each other right on the border right now. So uh, that's your classic sign of rotation when it comes to looking out of velocity signature. But on reflectivity, no, you really don't see a normal hook echo as what most people think of a hook echo. Uh, it's pretty high precipitation, pretty messy. So. So, uh, yeah, you're not going to see that classic structure. It's a little bit too high precip for that. All right. Very good, sir. Thank you very much for that explanation. I'm watching. KD-0, UFO. Yep, and I said put it in motion. Um, hit the play button and take a look at a few frames and watch that green and red, and you'll see that it, as you look at it and visualize this wind, uh, it becomes a lot more noticeable, especially it was actually a little bit better looking about 10 minutes ago. So some of those earlier frames around 530 are a little bit stronger in color uh, when it was a little bit further into Colorado yet. So, yep, hope that helps. K0 LWC on Skyhub. Air 
X zero zero X R X from K zero V H. Uh, Mark, are you listening? Net control KD zero D. KD zero D or J. Go ahead. Yes, sir, sir, your call sign pop up there. Sorry, has the volume down. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to relay to Matt. The uh, National Weather Service uh, canceled the uh, tornado watch for Denver only. Thanks for the traffic, Chris. KZRLWC. Yeah, Matt, uh, the... Uh, the tornado watch for Denver that was in effect until 2,800 hours has been canceled. Yep, my copy. Tornado watch for Denver has been canceled. Ahead of schedule. Thanks, Chris. Not a problem, KD0. DUJ will be clear to monitor. Yeah, I'm at K0VH, uh, watching that line from Sydney down to just about, what is it, Flagler? Looks like a fang, man, on the uh, on the radar. And, of course, uh, uh, the interesting thing that I'm seeing here is, man, those severe storms are going right over my transmitter site, uh, just uh, five miles east of Sterling. Hope it didn't get tornado at. Hopefully didn't have any damage out there that you have to tend to. Another uh, quick warning to air here. Uh, there's a new train of warning for the next 15 minutes for northeastern Washington County, northeast Colorado, until 5 o'clock. At 4.43, it's severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado is located near Elba, or 16 miles south of Akron, moving northeast of 50. Take a look at radar. Uh, this uh, area of rotation is certainly nothing like what we're experiencing uh, out in the far northeastern corner of the state. Uh, this area of rotation is a little bit weaker. It could be a brief uh, EF0, EF1 tornado possibly. Again, no reports of anything on the ground. This is radar indicated. Again, this is uh, just to the south of Akron, moving off in the general vicinity of Otis. Okay, zero, all of you see. Zero WC key zero VH. Looks like that Akron viral camera is going to be uh, interesting to watch for a while. Um, pulling it up and, and looking at that, uh, it's getting shaken by the wind pretty well. Pretty good uh, rain coming through there at this time. K zero VH. Uh, and by the way, I was going to tell you that uh, I'll try to get you some information on when we have the uh, uh, the, cam uh, the uh, new repeater up at Scotts Bluff because it would be covering the affected areas, uh, Sydney, uh, Lodgepole, so on and so forth. Uh, uh, a little bit later, they just haven't got it going yet. And man, the wind is really picked, uh, whipping up in Akron. K zero L W C K zero V H. Yeah, those storms just blew through Akron, so I'm sure they're getting some gusty winds uh, just based on radar. It looks like, uh, from what I can tell, granted, this is pretty high up. Uh, I don't know exactly the height on these winds, but the winds I'm seeing right now are around 80 miles an hour. But given that you're looking at the tower, they're probably actually about accurate for where the tower is at, depending on how high it is. Um, I mean, because it's above the ground level quite a bit. So, yeah, I'm showing winds 80 to 85 almost. Uh, just to the northeast side of Akron, so yeah, it's definitely blowing through there. Zero SOG looking for a radio check on Sky Blink. Yeah, SSU, you're uh, solid into whichever repeater you're on there. Good afternoon. Yeah, Matt, uh, that. Uh, uh, that area of rain literally just cleared out of Akron. I mean, it, it was going and then it was gone. So, uh, yeah, Akron's going to be in the clear here pretty pretty much, it looks like, hopefully soon. Anyway, thanks again for the job you're doing today, man. Appreciate you. Uh, K0VH. Zero, Let's go for the Nebraska Panhandle real briefly before we let this one go. The... Uh large tornado that was confirmed in Colorado. Haven't had any recent reports on it um, since it moved across into Nebraska, however. It is now uh, crossing over I-80 just west of Lodgepole. Uh, radar currently has it sitting about uh, 
let's see, about six miles due west of Lodgepole, uh, right along I-80 at the present time. Uh, again, that tornado or possible tornado is crossing over the interstate now uh, as it moves off into the rest of Pan Hill. Other uh, tornado warning farther back into Colorado. That storm, again, not nearly as impressive. There's potential for a brief weak spin up here. Uh, that storm is going to be approximately about uh, 12 miles southeast of Akron. Taking a look at the radar right now, it looks like there's a, a chance of a brief tornado. Uh, fairly weak, but nonetheless, it is there, and that's the prompt warning. So, And that is the only other warning that's currently active in the state of Colorado. So uh, depending on what happens with this last warning, we may be wrapping up the net here in the next 15 or 20 minutes as these storms push farther east uh, into the far eastern fringes of Colorado. This is K0LWC. Panhandle, the uh, large area of circulation potential tornado on the ground is now just to the west side of Lodge Pole at this time. Again, radar out of Cheyenne showing a broad area of rotation it is now north of Interstate 80, but it is uh, in and around the Lodge Pole area, probably just to the west side of town, uh, based on what I'm seeing here. Area of rotation is probably centered around, oh, let's have a look see here. Yeah, I would say it's probably around Road 147 to Road 145, right along Interstate 80 at this time. Uh, kids are all WC. Yeah, I'm going to pull up the uh, city camera. There's a village of zero on it. It's three or. You said that was a Sydney camera? Yeah, there was a brief 15 seconds of almost zero visibility on the uh, Sydney camera. I made uh, the gas station gas sign and the police lights on the interstate there, like you couldn't even see it, and quite a bit of lightning went dark, and then uh, 15 seconds later came back to what we're seeing now. So it seems like that tornado went through to the uh, east of there. Was it just lightning or lightning flashes that you saw, or could you tell? Oh yeah, you can see the lightning flashes. There was one just about 10 seconds ago. Same control on the scanner, I'm saying it's going through launch pole. Looks like there's two areas of rotation, but certainly the main circulation is now north of Lodgepole, well, probably three to four miles. Looks like there's another one wrapping up. Uh, I don't know if it's a handoff or what, but uh, just the west of Chapel coming up on I-80. I don't know if you're seeing that same thing, girl. Good afternoon. The time is five o'clock. And you're on the Rocky Mountain Radio Links W0WYX repeater located 30 miles west of downtown Denver on Spawn Mountain at an elevation of 11,440 feet. Through all the information and the links on the webcams who have been following along here in Dublin and uh, hope everybody is safe home. Uh, station, go ahead. Keys are all WC. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate all the work you're doing there for us this afternoon. Uh, are we still seeing that on the ground, or is it just still just, I'll just radar indicated there uh, north of Valley 80 area? 
Well, no, let me take a quick scan of it. Uh, it looks about the same as it did when it came across I-80, so for all intents and purposes from radar, I would say uh, it very well could be on the ground still. Um, it certainly looks like uh, it's about 10 miles due north of Lodgepole at this time, but uh, yeah, nothing's much changed in the velocity. Yeah, very good. I appreciate it. I think we have any major population areas uh, that are clear. I think it's uh, out there in the middle of the sand. It's going to be affecting any uh, populated areas there for at least the time being. To get off I-80, I imagine. Well, to getting into that area where there's more cows than people. That's for sure. All righty. Listening here. K9 and HP, thank you. All right, very good. K0, WC. State Park. How you doing, Mike? KD0SBN, KD0MC, good afternoon, Steve. Just uh, thought I'd check in and see what was going on. All is well where I am. I have blue skies and sunshine. I, uh, I hope that's what's happening in your neck of the woods, too. Well, we just had a tornado watch uh, uh, advisory out of uh, Goodland Weather Bureau, so we got a little red square just south of us, about uh, 10 miles. And uh, I was wondering, I was watching all the spotters heading this way earlier today. I said, hmm, I don't see nothing on the radio or on the radar, but uh, they're heading out here. And uh, here it comes. So it's not like yesterday, uh, all that storming over there in the uh, Lyman area. Uh, we didn't get anything. We got a heavy lightning and thunder and rain at 11, 11.30 last night. So that's it at, at nighttime here. Kzo MC. Well, you keep your head low and uh, watch out for any of that stuff flying around out there. You're sounding good over here. Yeah, you're sounding good too with your hot spot. I'm gonna have to learn about those, and uh, sometime we'll have to have a chat on a lot of this stuff. <laughs> okay, Steve, enjoy yourself. Are you out camping, by the way, for for a sign? Yeah, Roger. I came to Eleven Mile Reservoir for a couple of days to uh, see if I could catch a little fish, play a little portable HF, and. Uh, and uh, in, enjoy a couple of days. Yes, sir, camping. We're just south of us, about uh, 10 miles. And uh, I was wondering, I was watching all the spotters heading this way earlier today. I said, hmm, I don't see nothing on the radio or on the radar, but uh, they're heading out here. And uh, here it comes. So it's not like yesterday, uh, all that storming over there in the uh, Lyman area. Uh, we didn't get anything. We got a heavy lightning and thunder and rain at 11, 11.30 last night. So that's it, it at nighttime here. Kzo MC. Well, you keep your head low and uh, watch out for any of that stuff flying around out there. You're sounding good over here. Cool. 
Yeah, you're sounding good too with your hot spot. I'm gonna have to learn about those, and uh, sometime we'll have to have a chat on a lot of this stuff. <laughs> okay, Steve, enjoy yourself. Are you out camping, by the way, for for a sign? Yeah, Roger, I came to 11 Mile Reservoir for a couple of days to uh, see if I could catch a little fish, play a little portable HF, and uh, and uh, in enjoy a couple of days. Yes, sir, camping. Well, good for you. Good for your family. I'm, I'm happy you guys are able to get out and uh, Enjoy yourself. So anyway, Steve, you have a great time down there and uh, a great evening. And I'll say 7-3, KD0SBN, KD0MC. Hey, Mike, 7-3s, have yourself a good evening, too. And I'll either listen for you a little later here or I'll listen for you in the morning. Um, hopefully I'll be able to uh, work 75 meters. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to. But uh, talk to you later, kd 0 SB. at 45 miles an hour. Uh, radar indicated uh, tornado and quarter-sized hail uh, in the storm. A second tornado warning has been issued by the National Weather Service in Boulder. Uh, that's for southeastern Washington County in northeast Colorado until 5.45 p.m. Uh, severe thunderstorm capable of producing the tornadoes located near Cope or about 28 miles north of Seabird, moving northeast at 50 miles an hour. Uh, Quarter-sized hail and tornado has been reported with this storm. This is W3ORR on the Colorado Severe Weather Network. W3ORR, KZFC. Tornado watch remains in effect for the following counties in Colorado: Adams, Crowley, El Paso, Lincoln, Phillips, and Weld, Arapahoe, Denver, Kiowa, Logan, Sagbrook, Yuma, Cheyenne, Elbert, Kit Carson, Morgan, and Washington County until 8 p.m. this evening. This is from the National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma. Tornado warning continues for the area of South Central Kit Carson. Tornado was reported on the ground 14 miles south of Stratton, moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. Second tornado warning is issued for uh, Kit Carson. Uh, tornado is reported 14 miles south of Stratton, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. Tornado and quarter size hail has been reported with this. Uh, two tornado warnings right now in the state of Colorado on the eastern plains. That's the W3 ORR for the Colorado Sphere and the Weather Network on the sky of light. Three O R R. This is KD Zero D U J. Uh, just an FYI, the tornado watch for Denver County has been canceled. I don't know why that note just came out from Weather Service, but uh, they did just now correct that. Uh, no problems. I thought I'd just let you know, Daryl. Anyway, good hearing you in there. KD Zero D U J. Back in that. Uh, no problem. Yeah, I heard you tell Matt that earlier, and then, then this note just popped up in the, in the Weather Service chat room, and I'm like, wait a minute. So the uh, Tornado Watch uh, uh, remains in effect for Kiowa County, including the city of Eads, Logan, Washington, Phillips, and Sedgwick County. Uh, and this includes the cities of Akron, Holyoke, and Sterling. The other counties have been released from the, uh, the warning, or watch, rather. Uh, W3ORR. W3ORRK0MC. Yeah, Roger, the uh, warning south of uh, Stratton yet, uh, came across our phone and uh, it's on the screen. Over. And it looks like that tornado warning uh, dropped as it's crossing uh, just to the southeast of your location. The tornado warning uh, to the north of the uh, remains in effect. Uh, pretty good circulation in that one. Let's see if we've got, uh, yeah, we're showing a little bit of uh, rotation in that head towards Yuma, uh, right there on the, what's that, Highway 34 uh, to the north of you. But your tornado warning has been canceled for Stratton.
Yeah, the uh, the warning disappeared on the screen as I finished up talking. So, Roger that. Doing a great job. Good job. Good job. Appreciate it, man. Needed a big time break. He's uh, he's been covering all day long. Uh, there is still a, a line line of storms that are south of you there in Stratton, which are pretty strong. Uh, there's one south just to the east of Cheyenne Wells, another one down near Dee. It's all moving north northeast. That probably should not affect you. It'll probably hit Burlington. There is a second line of storms uh, south of Flagler, which is moving northeast, probably past just to the west of Stratton there. Uh, that's indicating a half inch hail. Uh, strong line of storms all the way up into Nebraska, including that one that uh, was tornado warned earlier. That cell has moved off into uh, near Hyannis. Uh, Nebraska. Still strong and large hail in that one. Uh, spotters on the ground reported three and a half, uh, three inch hail in that one. Uh, that tornado, uh, was on the ground from Sterling, um, uh, to about four miles north of Interstate 80. Uh, rain wrapped and they were saying that, uh, that time the thing was, uh, three quarters of a mile wide. Uh, so W3RR. On the Colorado Severe Weather Network on the Skyhook Line. In Denver, from May 23rd, our high temperature in Denver was 74 degrees. Our low was 50. We had 0.31 uh, inches of precipitation uh, recorded at the DIA. This is W3ORR on the sky of Lake. I think we did because when I got up this morning it was rather moist outside but we also had the uh, uh, fog overnight where visibility was almost down to like 10 feet I walked down the backyard I was like you got to be kidding me so it was either the, the dew that hit the ground or we had rain uh, you know like, let me uh, pull my weather station it'll tell you what uh, if we had a precipitation overnight same way Yeah, I'm showing uh, three tenths of an inch of uh, precipitation overnight uh, here at the TTH. And it looks like uh, for the month, 3.12 inches and uh, for two months, 5.56 inches of, uh, of rain. Wow, that's uh, quite a bit. I think that's our yearly total for this area unless we get a severe thunderstorm. Yeah, <laughs> it is a lot. Uh, yeah, well, you guys got way more than I did then, so. Uh, yeah, I'm just curious. I just turned the radio on, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes ago, and all the, easy, all the hard work's done. I've got two hoses running, filling the tree wells, and I've got, uh, I don't know, three... One, two, two more to go and on the windbreak and then six more to go over by the driveway and, or, well, in between the shop and the house, but, uh, yeah, all my stuff's pretty much planted. Anything, uh, to go on the ground. It's got one of these new 360 degree ball cameras just today in the mail. I'm going to go get a SD card for it. And, Mounted up on the uh, antenna pole up on the roof. Just, uh, I don't feel like climbing a ladder today. I don't have an SD card to throw in it. Then I got a, it's supposed to be a weatherproof camera, but they give you an adapter uh, with a pigtail. It's only three feet long, so I've got to weatherproof that as it comes down the pole. So we'll send it back to you. Maybe three or one. We were doubled up for quite a bit of that. I don't know how that happened. Um, <laughs> oh, well. Uh, what kind of camera did you get? I, I want to get one for my wife. I got this uh, for 49 bucks on Amazon, and it does work with the Alexa system. And I tested it out and uh, came up on the big screen TV. And uh works good for forty nine bucks. 
like I said, the only thing I don't like is I've got to wrap it up in uh, some weatherproof tape and plastic for the uh, for the height because I'm going to throw it up on the uh, AD, ADBS uh, antenna pole so I can at least have a visual of uh, uh, 30 feet in front of the house. I'm just looking at the north there. I'm like, holy cow, man. I didn't realize the storms are just north of us. That's on Thursday or Wednesday, and it looks like I didn't even mow it. I can't believe how fast this grass is growing in this backyard. I know I put fertilizer down, but I didn't think it was like steroids. Yeah, I mowed, I can't remember what I mowed, but it wasn't that long ago, and uh, I just haven't had time. I should go get on the mower right now, and I could get part of it done. I got a hose stretch across part of it, and I could get the majority of it done. But I planted 41 trees, started about 9 o'clock yesterday morning, and, uh, well, I dug the holes Friday, and, uh, all but six. We just uh, just dug six and then planted six more junipers. But uh, 41 trees this weekend. I'm beat. Yeah, I had to do a double take when you said four one 41 trees. Yeah, that's that's a lot of work. Should have called me. I could have come down and helped you. Um, yeah, I've had to mow the lawn front and back twice since last Saturday. That's how much rain we've had. It's absolutely ridiculous how fast this stuff is growing. Yep. I guess I'm not going to complain, though, because uh, it doesn't take me that long to mow. And, uh, man, we needed the moisture bad, so... Uh, in our part of the state, and then where you are, is, I think we're doing pretty good. I don't know about the North Platte drainage. I haven't uh, I haven't looked at that. I guess I, I guess I should because that kind of affects like Mac. Well, I'll tell you what. As long as I've known you and you and I've been talking, we've had terrible crops growing for the last three plus years, and uh, I think this year you may have a good uh, full crop that comes up. Well, and I'm doing something different. I'm doing straw bale gardening. Everything except corn. Um, it's all getting planted in straw bales this year. So it's going to be kind of interesting. Well, it's too bad you didn't grow corn because the, the, the cost of a bushel went from about a month ago, three bucks a bushel, and now it's Sitting and this is no joke at eight bucks a bushel. Uh, I got some really good corn over at Walmart the other day. I was surprised how big it was. I'm not sure if it's coming in from Russia or China, but uh, man, the sweet tasting and full ears of corn. I mean, large. The prices went from 33 cents all the way to 60 cents per ear. <laughs> I've had a, I've bought corn a couple different times, um, and I'm not sure. It probably it could have come from California already, um, maybe. But you know, it's hard to tell where it's come. I don't I ever I never see a labeling where it comes from, like watermelons are coming out of Mexico this time of year, and we've had pretty good luck. Um, but I, you know, the corn, I don't know. I, <laughs> coming in, well, it's coming in from China or Russia, man. I tell you what, that'd be some pretty special corn. Well, we used to get corn out of Russia during the wintertime. Um, I don't know if they're still doing it. Uh, but yeah, the, the ears of corn this year have been plump and, my goodness, big, and definitely an increase on the price. Uh, you know, normally it's 33 cents, and then we went and got uh, six ears the other day for dinner, and they were charging 60 cents a piece. And I'm like, well, that's going to affect our fuel prices, being the corn expensive like that, because we uh, get, what, 10%, up to 10% ethanol, which is made from corn in our fuel. 
Uh, I know our diesel prices up here are, are way high, like three fifty-five a gallon for diesel. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> well, here comes the boss. She's all cleaned up and ready to go eat, and I'm still watering trees, so. I'll let you get back to your weather stuff, and uh, we'll talk at you a little bit later, Daryl. Casey, you're okay with you. Sounds good, Marty. Hey, if you ever need any help down there, give me a shout. I'll come down and uh, give you an extra hand to help. We'll talk to you in a bit. Uh, Casey, you're okay, okay? You okay? I mean, 3 0 rr on this kind of like. minutes for northwestern Yuma County in northeastern uh, Colorado. Severe so thunderstorms are located along the line, extended five miles south of St. Petersburg to 13 miles south of Otis, moving northeast at 40 miles an hour. Half hour size hail, six mile an hour winds, the radar indicated. Uh, so if you're in that area, it's just a heads up. Uh, tornado watch remains in effect until uh, 8 p.m. tonight for uh, cities included Akron, Ray, Goodland, Kansas, Cheyenne, Wells, Flagler, Eads, and in the Kansas side would be Tribune and Nebraska Imperial and further north. And that's till uh, 8 p.m. tonight. Uh, W3OR on the Colorado Severe Weather Network. Sky of Link, uh, looking at the radar, got a strong uh, line of storms that uh, reach from Yuma through Holyoke, through Julesburg, Oshkosh, Nebraska, and Hyannis, Nebraska. Uh, multiple severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, tornadoes could not be ruled out in this. Uh, large hail, dangerous lightning, and high winds. So, uh, Anywhere from Nebraska, Panhandle, through northeast Colorado, Julesburg, down to Yuma. Uh, we've got a couple more cells that are starting to form uh, right along the I 70 area over near Stratton uh, between Flagler and Burlington. Uh, these are indicating the one inch hail down to Cheyenne Wells through Eads and all the way down to Lamar. Uh, these are all going to join up in one line that will probably stretch about 150 miles uh, moving to the northeast and then crossing into Nebraska and uh, the Kansas State Line. Uh, this is W3OR on the Sky of Link with the Colorado Severe Weather Network. As these are moving, they are moving uh, northeast at about uh, anywhere from 45 to 51 knots uh, to the northeast. Uh, Holyoke, uh, if you're in that area, you could be looking at 1.25 inches size in hail. Uh, Sterling, we're getting three quarters of an inch down by Yuma. We're reporting 1.25 inches, and that cell's moving to the northeast at 42 knots also. Uh, down towards Kirk, that's a half inch. That storm is moving north-northeast at 58 knots. And as we get down towards uh, uh, just north of Cheyenne Wells, those cells are reporting almost two-inch diameter hail and moving northeast at 21 knots. They'll pick up a little bit of speed when they join up with these line of thunderstorms that are stretching all the way into Nebraska. Uh, just north of uh, I-80 uh, in Oshkosh, uh, we're reporting three quarters of an inch uh, hail. Storms moving north-northeast at 62 knots. And if you're in the Hyannis area, uh, that is under severe thunderstorm warning, which expires in about 27 minutes. Uh, that's southeast Sheridan County in the Panhandle till 6.30. Uh, we're looking at the areas of Oshkosh, uh, two-inch size hail, wind gusts have been reported 70 miles an hour. Uh, locations include Ellsworth, Hainus, Ashby, Watson Lake, Dippenvat Meadow, uh, Finnegan Lake, Swede Lake, Deer Lake, Britton Lake, and Argo Hill. Uh, this includes the following highways, Highway 2 between mile marker 115 and 146, Highway 61 between mile markers 159 and 175. Uh, the storm is producing a large hail. Seek shelter now inside a sturdy structure. Stay away from windows. Torrential rain is also occurring with the storm and may lead to flash flooding. Do not drive a vehicle through with flooded roadways. Tornado watch remains in effect in this area until 8 p.m. tonight. For the Panhandle and West Central Nebraska, this is W3OR on the Sky of Link. Well, 
Master 1, the service in Goodland, Kansas has issued a tornado warning for northwestern Yuma County, northeast Colorado, until 6.45 p.m. Uh, at 6.03, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado is located up to Yuma, moving northeast at 35 miles an hour. Hazards involved. Tornado and half dollar size hail. This is radar indicated. Uh, damage likely. This is a dangerous storm. It will be near Eckley around 6.20 p.m. This includes Highway 385 near mile marker 255 in northeast Colorado. Move to a basement or interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building. Avoid windows. If you're outdoors in a mobile home or in a vehicle, move to the closest substantial shelter and protect yourself from flying debris. Once again, tornado warning has been issued uh, by the National Weather Service in Goodland, Kansas, for northeast Colorado for northwestern Yuma County until 6.45 p.m. This is W3OR on the sky of Blank. National Weather Service in Goodland, Kansas has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for northwestern Cheyenne County in east central Colorado, southwestern Kit Carson County in central Colorado until 7 p.m. Severe thunderstorm is located 17 miles south of Seabird, moving northeast at 35 miles an hour. 16 mile an hour gust winds and half dollar size hail can be expected. Uh, once again, damage to vehicles, uh, high wind damage to roofs, siding, and trees. Locations impacted include Vona and Stratton. This includes Interstate 70 in Colorado between mile markers 403 and 424. Once again, National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for northwestern Cheyenne County, southwest Kit Carson. This includes towns of Vona and Stratton along Interstate 70 in eastern Colorado. W3ORR on the sky of Lake. K0MC, W3ORR, uh, your area is looking up to 1.25 inches of hail moving uh, towards your location at this time. Uh, moving north, north, east, north, northeast at 51 knots. Uh, it looks like to be in your area here at about 610, so another three minutes. Just of Yuma, uh, in between Eckley and Yuma, we're showing hail at uh, 1.5 inches moving north northeast at 42 knots. There's a little bit of tight circulation in there. It could indicate uh, either a funnel or possibly on the ground. Uh, trying to get confirmation from storm chasers on the ground, but uh, definitely shown on the uh, velocity radar here. So uh, if you're up along that uh, highway there, just east of Yuma, uh, use caution up there. Expected to cross over, it looks like Highway 34, uh, within the next uh, two to three minutes there. And another storm warning near Stratton, just to the east of Seabird. The uh, radar is now indicating 2.25 inches uh, hail diameter. Uh, so if you're along I-70 out in that area between Seabird and Stratton, uh, you might want to uh, stop before you get towards uh, Stratton. Uh, this is a large storm. A little bit of rotation in that, and it's now moving north northeast at 23 knots. Looks like uh, the center of this core will hit uh, Stratton at about 6.17 p.m., uh, according to the algorithm. So uh, along uh, I-70 between Seward and Stratton, large hail, 2.25 inches uh, radar indicated. W3 LRR on the sky of Lake. Length, the tornado warning. Uh, over there, just to the east of Yuma, it looks like it's crossing right over Highway 34. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a very strong amount of rotation in that. I are seeing winds in and out uh, from the radar. Uh, but once again, uh, tornado warning in effect for northwestern Yuma, northeast of Colorado until 6.45 p.m. Uh, this storm was producing a potential tornado uh, right just east of Yuma now, uh, crossing Highway 34. is moving northeast at 35 miles an hour. Uh, they were indicating radar indicated dollar size uh, uh, hail. Um, so keep an eye on this, uh, especially in that area. This could be rain wrapped uh, the way we're looking at the radar right now. So a little bit of caution if you're in the northeast Colorado this evening. W3 over our arms, guy of Lake. And 
just to have uh, balsa around the Holyoke, uh, Paoli, and Houghton area. Uh, we're starting to see a little bit of rotation in that cell also. Uh, Radar is indicating 1.25 inches of hail. Uh, looking at the velocity, we're not seeing too much of a rotation. I'm going to switch radar here and see if we can see a little bit better. Uh, w three. Okay, switching over to the Cheyenne radar, we are seeing uh, a little bit of rotation in that area. Uh, there's two cells uh, right next to each other, uh, but not wrapping around. I wouldn't be surprised if they put out a warning for that area, northeast Colorado, uh, heading into Nebraska. So just to heads up, uh, Julesburg area, uh, maybe 3 rr on the sky of light. Thunderstorm warning remains in effect till 6.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time for Southwest Charity, Northwest Grant, Northeastern Garden, and Southeastern Sheridan Counties. Uh, 6.11 p.m. A severe thunderstorm located uh, near Ashby or 37 miles northwest of Arthur, moving northeast at 50 miles an hour. Uh, it's been reported by trained weather spotters that golf ball size hail is falling uh, four miles southwest of Bingham. Uh, so heads up up here in the uh, Nebraska area. This includes the cities of Ellsworth, Hyannis, Ashby, Watson Lake, Dippin' Rat Meadow, Finnegan Lake, Sweet Lake, Kincaid Lake, and Kennedy Lake, Wild Horse Flats, Mother Lake, Bingham, Wolf Hill, Dominant Lake, and Jerry Lake and Argo Hill. This is just on the uh, north side of the uh, northeast portion of Colorado into Nebraska. Uh, following highways effect, it will be Highway 2 between mile marker 115 and 145 and Highway 61 between mile markers 159 and 175. Torrential rainfall is occurring in this storm and may lead to flash flooding. This is w 3 rr on the sky of Lake. Sky of Lake, tornado warning remains in effect until 645 for northwestern Yuma County. At 616, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was over Eckley, or nine miles east of Yuma, Colorado, moving northeast at 35 miles an hour. Reports of half dollar size hail, possible tornado, uh, could be in this storm. This is a dangerous storm and is, is over Eckley, Colorado, right now. This includes Highway 385 near mile marker 255. W3OR on the Colorado Severe Weather Network on the sky of Link. All right, Mike may have an antenna unplugged due to a lot of lightning up there, starting to show a little bit of rotation, some uh, larger size hail. Getting ready to cross I-70 right at Stratton, Colorado. Uh, W3ORR snap. W3ORR KJOMC. Yeah, I was in the kitchen and uh, heard you give me a call, and uh, yeah, it just now hit uh, hit my blazer. Okay, Mike, just checking on you. Yeah, just to the south of you there, it looks like uh, they're reporting up size hail that's going to go right over Stratton here. Well, we can do without that, but I guess <laughs> can't stop Mother Nature. All right, thanks, uh, Daryl, for the report. And the uh, only thing I'm getting now is uh, wind and uh, uh, a lot of rain. Hopefully it just stays that way. Be looking out for that hang okay, sir. I'm safe. Very good. Sounds good, Mike. There's it's a line of storms, and there's one area that's getting ready to beeline into your area. Uh, that's indicating two-inch size hail, and then another cell right behind it where the tail is. Uh, that's also indicating uh, two-inch hail. Uh, looks like it's all moving north, northeast at uh, 28 knots, so uh, should be over here momentarily. Yeah, I just brought my radar up. I had it turned somewhere else. That storm was going north, man. That thing shifted to the northeast really quick. The whole, the whole line there is going northeast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are getting juicy down that area. Hopefully that uh, will move east of you. 
but it definitely looks like you're going to get both of those hail cores. And way north of you up there, uh, between Ray and Yuma, I got a tornado warning. Uh, still showing a little bit of rotation up there as it uh, approaches Holyoke. Very good. Thank you very much, Daryl. Keep up the good work. I'll catch you later, and I'll keep monitoring kids are safe. Very good. Sounds good, Mike. Don't let your antenna get struck by lightning again. Let's talk in bed. Kids are MCW3OR on the sky of link. On the sky of link, National Weather Service in Goodland has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for northeastern Yuma County, northeast Colorado, until 7.15 p.m. At 6.30, severe thunderstorm was located seven miles north of Eckley, or about 14 miles northeast of Yuma, moving northeast at 40 miles an hour. Uh, hazards include 60 mile hour wind gusts and quarter size or larger hail. This is radar indicated. Uh, this severe thunderstorm will remain pretty much over rural areas in northeast Human County, including the following locations of Alvin and Wampa. This includes Highway 385 between mile marker 247 and 270. And once again, for this area in northeast Colorado, a tornado watch remains in effect until 8 p.m. Uh, this evening, Mountain Daylight Time. This is W3ORR on the Sky of Lake Widget, Colorado, southeast Wyoming, and portion of Nebraska Severe Weather Network. Uh, W3ORR on the Sky of Lake, the tornado warning that was uh, for Eckley, Colorado is now expired. No longer a tornado warning, Northeast Colorado. W3ORR on a sky of link. We're on the sky of link. National Weather Service in Goodland, Kansas issued a severe thunderstorm warning for central Kit Carson County in East Central Colorado until 7.15 p.m. at 6.36. A severe thunderstorm was located six miles south of Stratton, moving northeast at 35 miles an hour. 70 mile an hour wind gusts and quarter inch size hail and larger is possible in this storm. The severe thunderstorm will be near Stratton around 6.45 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time and then around uh, Bethune at 6.55. This includes the following highways. Interstate I-70 in Colorado between mile markers 413 and 437. Highway 385 between mile marker 186 and 206 and near mile marker 211. Uh, tornado watch remains in effect in this area until 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time for northeastern and east central Colorado. This is W3ORR on the Sky of Lake. This case OMC in Stratton, yeah, the wind picked up considerably uh, for uh, a few minutes. I don't know if I got there in the 40s. And uh, it has calmed down. So, whatever south of us is uh, uh, probably getting ready to come into us. Gaze OMC. Yeah, Mike, it's like the heaviest of the hail is uh, to the east of you. And uh, let's see here. We're getting an update. Yeah, it looks like the radar is updated. Looks like that one's through the level a bit. And uh, you're getting. Uh, well, actually, to the west of you, uh, we're getting that cell now. And I do see that one cell we're talking about, but six miles south of you. Uh, that one is showing about half-inch hail. And that uh, northern cell uh, is about three-quarters of an inch. But that cell just to the north of you is starting to fire back up. Uh, and that one looks like it's going to cross into Kansas here in the next uh, 20, 30 minutes. U N repeater. And there, yeah, looks like it's uh, right on top of you now, and should be sliding east slowly from Stratton. So uh, you might not get that next cell with a hail on it. Uh, it's possible, uh, but it's, it's slowly drifting uh, to the east of Stratton. There, Seabird's in the clear, and it looks like uh, Burlington will be next uh, with this next cell that's uh, moving to the northeast. Uh, w three O R R on. Like all the weather chasers and spotters are just sitting on 235. Yeah, I've seen them hanging out along that road there. Uh, they're probably taking a lot of photos this afternoon. Uh, 
Well, it's probably moved east of me, Daryl. Sun's shining, and the wind stopped, or the rain stopped, and the wind's locked down, so. Be, uh, be monitoring, Gazer MC. Sounds good, Mike. Gazer MC, W3R. Yeah, you're, uh, now that you are on the west side of that stuff, uh, you should be good for the rest of the night, I'm hoping. I don't see anything else that will be building up.